Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to the final episode of The Weekly Planet for the year, but also the first episode of the new year, Mason. We're bad at scheduling. That's not our fault. That's the way that the, the, the calendar operates, you know? It changes every year. The ancient Aztecs were bad at scheduling. I'm glad they're all dead. Me too. Great. Finally, we got to say it. New Year, right. new hatreds. The Aztecs. <laughs> or the Mayans? No, the Gregorians, right? Just all of them. Just, Anybody who's made a calendar. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yuck. Yuck. Anyways, here we talk. Sort it out. Yeah. They should all have 20. Every month should have 29 days or something. <laughs> Whatever it is. Figure Somebody it out. Somebody should sort it out. Yeah. Odd number of days have to do that stupid rhyming thing. Oh, 30 days has September, April, June, and November. Disgusting. And then it gets to the bit to the end because it goes, Well, all the best of something in the world. Yeah, 30 days September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, excepting February alone. Shut up. (laughs) Which has 28 days clear of 29 and each leap year. Garbage. (laughs) I guess if you did that on the fly, like if you thought of it on the fly, that would be. That yeah, be, sure, as a good. first pass. Yeah, yeah. As like a, if you just came up with that on the spot, spot yeah. incredible. Like you were facing death because the <laughs> the the royal family were going to kill you for your bad calendar and you're like, well, it's all according to as the Christ, say. which is in the Bible. And they're like, <laughs> all right, we, you got us. <laughs> anyway, this is what we normally talk about. Not usually. It's a new year. It is. Uh, we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. Hello. This is our big show. Happy New Year. Happy holidays oh, to people. My mum's just calling. Oh, for it's God's good. sake. This is a disaster. <laughs> this is a, this 2024 has been a disaster so far. If she calls again, I'll answer because somebody could be dead. No, that's true, actually. Yeah. yeah. You're right. But, uh, well, yeah, so this is our big wrap-up episode. That's right, for 2023. Yeah. And then shortly thereafter, mm-hmm. in a few weeks, we're going to take a little break and then... That's right. We're going to take a little break now. Yeah. And then in a few weeks, we're going to be back. Yeah. And then we're going to be talking about the-, the All the new what, stuff. All the new stuff. Exactly. Forget this old stuff. Yeah. But not yet, because we have to talk about That's it. That's exactly right. So just in terms of what's happening, we're taking a break until January 29th. That will be the episode that we are back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there will be a best of episode, best of, <laughs> that uh, Robert Collings, who does a wonderful job editing this, and so many other things you don't even know. You don't even know, Mason. I don't know. He knows. Other people don't even know. Um, He's putting together a best of. That's going to go up in a couple of weeks or so, in sometime in January. But our private Patreon, which is actually called BigSandwich.co, which is not Patreon, but you do have a Patreon, but there's more stuff on this. That's going to be running all January, where we do video game let's plays, movie commentaries, right. bonus podcasts. And if you, you are missing us for some reason, there's an enormous... <laughs> Back catalogue that you can go through. Oh, and as also, if you are missing us, yeah. I was on a, uh, I was a guest on a podcast uh, mm. quite recently. Uh, I've been on there before, but the Lawman podcast. So Alistair Beckett King and James Shakeshaft, they they talk about local legends and yep. curiosities from days of yore. Yep, and, absolutely. And over the holidays, they do uh, they do uh, Christmas Pig, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is a uh, a series of episodes involving local legends and 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 magical historical things that are all about pigs. And so I was in an episode about an Arthurian legend of a pig. Oh, my God. Is a pig I, with a sword in it? Yep, yep, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, but there's a whole bunch with a bunch of uh, guests, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. Yep. Um, it also features a piece of Arthurian lore that has never been I've, – I've never seen it in any movie or read it in any comic book okay. or anything like that. Is it a laser? It's not a laser. That'd be cool, though. Oh, my God, that would be so cool. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Right. You can zap through a whole bunch of calendars you don't like. <laughs> but anyway, people can check that out. Absolutely. Or or pay money. At also that, sure. Go. Or do the free thing that I said. No, no, there's more content here, I'd imagine. That is true, actually, yeah. Video games also. Yeah, or you could listen to all of the Lawman back catalogue. Yeah, but this is free. No. <laughs> The it is free. free. <laughs> God, that's great. It's so much stuff and it's entertaining. I'm not on it, they're, though. They're funny guys and it's free. I'm not on it. That's true. This might be a good thing, almost certainly. Anyways, not a lot of news this week because it's quite kind of quiet between um, that's right. Christmas and New Year's. But we do have some a little bit of an update about who might be the main villain in the next MCU Avengers movie. We're going to talk about the future of Star Wars in terms of two returning or non-returning characters. Mm-hmm. James Gunn talks about, uh, uh, what is it, that stupid thing that um, he's doing, Superman. What? That's not stupid. I like Superman. I'm very much excited for it. And in terms of things that uh, when we're going to maybe get some updates in terms of the suit. Oh, that's right. And we're going to talk about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. That's, that's right. happening this episode. That's right. We recorded uh, We recorded that a mm. few days ago. So that's coming up. And it's uh, it's got a couple of things, including the debut of a fun, spooky new character. Is it? 
Yeah, uh, Fra- Ferrari Dracula. Oh, that, okay, that's right. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Ferrari Dracula. I do now that you've said it. Uh-huh. And then after that, we're going to do our best and worst that's of right. the year, um, mm-hmm. which is just a whole list of things where we've had 4,000 votes of people. Collings put together this this huge and, and beautiful document that you could vote on. Overwhelming. And, and on all say. the different things that you liked and maybe didn't of the year. And we're going to go, we're going to go through all of it. That's uh, right. People, the results that people uh, had and our results, which uh, I think are more interesting. Oh, you think so? Well, just, you know, as an individual having an opinion is better than a, like a mass of people shouting is my opinion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm actually on the side of the people and I think <laughs> our individual opinions mean nothing. And also you can listen to the Law Member Back Catalog for free. Yeah, but it's not free. It is free. I mean, it, t- it costs you battery on your phone. That's oh, true, actually, yeah. I didn't consider battery. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll start with this. This is via My Time to Shine Hello. But, uh, tell you what, plug it in at your work. Plug oh, yeah. your phone in at your work, get free electricity at work. Yeah, but you're still wearing down your phone, you know what I mean? It's it's taxing on that. Steal your boss's phone. Sure, that's and use fine. Their phone. But it's technically free, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, also, time codes below if you want to jump ahead. This is via My Time to Shine Hello, who says the Beyonder is uh, still the main villain for Secret Wars, and that will be their excuse to recast Kang. Okay. And then Cryptic HD Quality says, a different Twitter account mm-hmm. says, yes, and I've heard that they, I've heard is they won't explicitly present him as Beyonder Kang until the aftermath of the 616 collapse when he will go on to establish Battle World. So. The idea seems to be that because of Jonathan Majors being fired and mm. it's sort of going to be a recast sort of not, okay. mm-hmm. uh, and they're going to get this guy to come in and go, I'm the real bad guy and, and, he'll, For sure, absolutely. and he'll do a okay. big battle world. Look, I don't everyone. think any, either of these things are true currently. Uh-huh. I think this is made up, but <laughs> I think we are also in a stage where Marvel – are probably scouring everything they possibly They're can looking to, at everything to, and to find anything that will get them out of this particular multiversal pickle they are in. Yes. And it, so it wouldn't shock me if they went, Kang becomes the Beyonder? Okay, yeah. great, that actually or works Or always was. Or it has this could to... be proven right simply by the fact that they are flailing and spiraling. <laughs> that somebody there heard this from yes. somebody. Or yeah. more likely saw these tweets. Mm. And yeah. I, we mentioned a few weeks ago, somebody emailed in to suggest, and again, we don't know if this is confirmed or not, that... Perhaps Jonathan may just signed a contract yeah. to suggest that he could be the only person cast as Kang. Yeah. Given that it's a it's a there character, would be a clause. Yeah, yeah. Given that there is a you know it's a character who can have it has numerous different looks and etc. I think if you were if you were potentially being cast as this character, your you know somebody in your in your camp might go well. We don't want you to be immediately recast if they don't like you. What have you? You you might want to put a clause in there. That seems that logic seems sound to sure, me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You might be like, well, he, he can be the only guy. You know, yeah, so but I think also there would definitely be a clause that was like if anything happens like sure. that we don't consider in line with our disparagement. Branding, then, yes, yeah, exactly. Then, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you are out on your ass, but, mate. But this could work if you were like, well, technically, you know, we, we've we've talked in the past about how you know if if a, if a you know an entertainment company or a comic book company is some in some sort of legal pickle, yeah, they're well, I mean, just any company, I guess they're yeah. just going to find a way to oh, yeah. skirt around this. And if they're like, well, if if the thing we said was true, then potentially they could be like. Well, beyond a Kang, that's a different guy. Here's a Sorry. question for you. Go on. Which one's that? Beyonder. <laughs> I get be- confused between that one and Eternity and whatever. The Beyonder, <laughs> I think. He's the guy, if you you'll know him you'll know him from his like his eighties look, which is like a big disco collar. Yeah. He's like a I think was he born of a cosmic cube or something, Ooh. perhaps? I think he was maybe like... Like how mon- mon- monkey magic was like shot out of a I rock. I think so, yeah. I think he's born of some primordial thing and he wants to understand humanity and so he's 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 like, well, I'll get them to fight. Oh, okay. Because that's how that Which works. Which has happened a couple of times. Yeah, and then I think in a, a later Secret Wars he became fully human and then he walked among the people and he's like, oh, I get it now. Hot dogs. <laughs> a new, An oh, authentic New York hot moments. dog, you know? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Wow. Do you want me to a burger? Do, do I'll to, put a bug in it. Do you want it. me to simply read from the Wikipedia page, uh, all dry and logical? Like, do I simply want that? Do you want that? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Cool. Well, let's do that. This is content, isn't it? No. Here we go. Here we go. Oh look! At, oh look at these. Oh. I know he looks great, doesn't he? Oh, great stuff. Cosmic entity. Sure, we know that. Created by Jim Shooter and Mike Zek. Yep. Uh, first appeared in Secret Wars, the the toy advertisement. Love it. Uh, first appeared as an unseen, nigh omnipotent being from outside the multiverse who kidnapped the hero. Blah, 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 blah. Have them do battle on battle. Jeez, world. get on with it. Oh, my God. In Secret Wars 2, he takes human form to learn about desire, but threatens to destroy the multiverse out of increasing frustration. Why? He doesn't get to kiss a girl. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I hear you, man. He's a manifestation of the Beyond Realm, which exists separately from the multiverse, accidentally accessed by 
uh, lab technician Owen Reese. That's Molecule Man. Yep. Uh, energy escapes and views Reese with his powers. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Mason. He's just a guy from another universe. Just say yeah. nonsense. Just say it's nonsense. It okay? is, it, he's from a nonsense it is, thing. It's an, it is nonsense thing and they try their best to make it palatable <laughs> to people who are already sick of things from outside the multiverse or whatever. Oh, my God. Outside of a multiverse? Is that even possible? Oh, actually, that, maybe that's a loophole. Maybe people will be like, we hate the, we're sick of this multiverse stuff. Oh, outside the multiverse? What's out there? I don't know. It's mostly the same. There's a guy shot out of a rock or whatever. <laughs> That's right. Oh, like monkey magic? Yes, like monkey magic. <laughs> if that'll get you to buy tickets? Yes, like <laughs> monkey magic. Like Goku also. Yeah, there like we Goku, go. Goku, you guys like Dragon Ball Z? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. We yeah, watch, yeah, yeah. You watch that movie? People love it, probably. Yeah. Uh, Mason. Not probably, undeniably. Yeah, maybe they're going off the boil a bit, you know, because they keep doing it. They keep being oh. like, and he's back and he's got blue hair. And maybe people are like, I'm sick of this. Does he? Goku's got blue hair. blue hair now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is that exciting to you? His blue hair shot out of a rock, landed right in his head. <laughs> so it's a wig. I don't know. <laughs> right. Wouldn't be very cool if it was a wig. It'd I, be mean, cool it's, if it was it, I mean, it's sort of a testament to how, how easily tricked I am. Like, you know how Godzilla's pink now? Yeah. I'm like, yes, great. <laughs> yes. Does it impact anything? No, but look out. Look at the contrast between yeah, him different. and the water. Wow. It's different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Adam Driver went on the Smartless podcast. And he was asked about Kylo Ren's return. Oh. Uh, spoiler alert for The Rise of Skywalker. He died. Wow. He had a big kiss and then he died. But I just want to talk about Ferrari. Yeah. I want to make the fast okay. car. Okay, all right, you know, all right. You yeah. know what he's like. Yeah, so I know what he's like. That's just the vibe I get from, I haven't seen the movie yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just loving that I Italian I build accent. the car to honor my son, he die. Uh-uh. <laughs> Blair. <laughs> oh, know? he's not laughing? No. Stop. Why would he laugh about that? I don't know. He's a Dracula. Who okay. knows? He's probably got a lot of sons. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Alucard. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you remember, he uh, had a big kiss and then he disappeared. I do remember that. Which also, I think if they wanted to bring him back, there's Ghost. And there's also, you could be like, he teleported. It's a force power and he teleported Perfect. away. Yep. You know? Or he teleported into a clone vat or yep. whatever. There's a clone well, of him now. He went in that time travel tree. Yeah, time travel tree. <laughs> you could go, oh, the, the Emperor, he knew that he knew that they'd fight him and so and he'd, they'd die, so he... Like he cloned them. Yeah. He cloned them there and now he's back. Yeah. And he's conflicted. Yeah. Yeah. Because his, his dad or whatever cloned him, his granddad. Yeah. Yep. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> you know. Yeah. His granddad was actually um, whoever Han Solo's dad is, Mason. Oh. I think you'll find. Okay. And Darth Vader. Nice. I think you'll find. Oh. Anyway, that, he was asked about it and he said, they're doing stuff, but not with me. I'm not doing any more. <laughs> So yeah, great, go. great. Yeah. And that's my final word on it until the next interview when somebody's going to ask me again. Yeah. But I just want to talk about Ferrari, he yeah. said. He slipped into the character. He's loving that Italian accent he used in the previous movie where he was House of Gucci, yeah, Italian. absolutely, yeah. yeah. God damn. I want to make Fashion House big and successful. My son died. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, ah. boy. <laughs> Mason? Yes. Also oh, by- did his son die in House of Gucci as well? I don't know. I can't remember. doesn't matter. It was... It was okay. Maybe. I wanted it to be really good. It was okay. okay. But Jared Leto was really good at it. And by that, I mean absolutely fucking atrocious. <laughs> Mason. Yes. Uh, News Hub also spoke to Temuera Morrison, who, of course, plays Django Fett, Boba Fett, all of the clones. Aquaman's dad. Aquaman's dad. Mm. Exactly. Aqua dad. He's also in the movie Six West Days, dad. Seven Nights. Damp dad. Damp dad. <laughs> Oh, my God, the wettest, dampest dad. It's in Six Days, Seven Nights, the yeah. Harrison Ford and Hayes movie. Yes, Mason, right. Boba Fett and Han Solo in the same movie. Wow, yeah. wow. Uh, ask- wow. <laughs> <laughs> you want to watch it now, huh? Yeah. I've seen it. Um, so oh, he- no, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> no? No. You want it to be know just what your you. taste is like. Yeah. I didn't say anything about it. It's, wow. It's not great. It's fine. Um, he was asked about returning as Boba Fett in season two of Boba Fett. Okay. And he said, no, I- the show will go on without me. <laughs> Boba Fett's dead in Good. this universe. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. We're coming out of the of this downtime period, so I think everyone is just settling back in, and it all goes back to budgets and what they want to do and how much the thing costs. I don't really know. Judging by the fans I've met, they all want a season two, but I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, people don't like that. And season. that's my final word on that until the next time I'm interviewed for something else when they're going to ask me about Boba Exactly, Boba yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think we'll see him again. I want to be a big crime boss. He's not a Dracula, no, he's Mason. No, he's absolutely not a Dracula. Yeah, it was having... I tried to sneak that one past you. <laughs> he was ready for it. He was having dreams in a space in a space bath. That's true, yeah. In order of when they happened to him. Yep. Really good stuff. <laughs> That's right. Uh, oh, where did I leave off last time I was in the back to tank? <laughs> Here we go. Previously on back to he tank He probably dreams. marks it on the inside with like a waterproof marker. No doubt he does. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, look, I think he'll turn up for... 
Mandalorian season three, Thrawn yep. movie and whatever. Sure, but sure, yeah, sure. I'm not sure season two of that show is going to be likely. Give him a little fun spin off where he kills a bunch of people. Give him a fun scene like like, the, a, like a thirty minute thing. Like the like in his early, you know, his first appearance in Mandalorian where he kills all those guys. Yeah, exactly. He kills them with these knee rockets. And remember that episode of um Boba Fett where it was just the Mandalorian? Yeah. Where they just did an episode of Mandalorian oh, in the middle of it. That's cinema. Isn't it just? Mm. No, that's streaming. Oh. Which yuck. some people that think is akin to cinema. It's true. Disney sure like it to me. Mm. All right, so uh, James Gunn was asked by uh, Dweeb Really on whatever social media platform he's on, Threads. Yeah, he would be on Threads. Yeah. yeah. He says, this is the last bit of news. Oh. Sorry, everybody. What's the likelihood of seeing what the suit looks like before filming in March, uh, as in the Superman suit? Sure. Mm-hmm. And James Gunn said 0.0. Good. You don't want to know? No. Now, he's hinted towards like a number of things but, uh, like, or he posts comics and he's like, these don't mean anything. But there seems to be an indication that he's going to be doing the red and black. I don't like yes. that. I don't like no, the red and black. I don't yes. mind it. Oh, let me show you some, uh, let me show you some concepts, Mason. Okay. All and right. then you come and tell him, oh, I wasn't even ready for the, God damn it, Mason. Now you're okay. annoying me. Because this is more the, the golden age, like the yes. Fleischer Superman, which is the red S with the black, but I don't like it. You I don't like the like red it? and gold. Here we go. All right. Mm. You're going to be eating your words and you're going to give me a hundred dollars. Oh. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> Open your wallet. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Velcro wallet, Mason. Yeah, that's right. You're up to. Nothing right. wrong with that, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Get oh, is that your stance in 2024? Get yourself a Velcro wallet. Yeah, that's right. I don't have one. Yeah. But uh, get yourself one. Okay, here's some concepts I put up. I saw on Yolio Comics DC and Games put this up. Okay. So these are some different um, – this is, this is great for the visual medium that is podcasting. You can imagine it. So if you look at the black suit, the one with the black and the whatever, okay. it looks pretty good. Oh, it's got a gold frame to it. Okay, yeah. I, don't, I don't hate it. Yeah. And it's, okay, so it's got a gold frame to it and it's got it's got the black in the S and it's got a black on the belt. Yeah. Okay, I can see that working. What do you think about without the jocks though? Don't like it. Mm, I don't hate it. I like it with the jocks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think he's going to go for the black one, but I don't know. Yeah, okay, right. We'll see. I mean, recently we've seen, the, the only time we've seen it recently is at the start of well, I, we probably saw it in that horrible flash montage. Yeah, but sure. we also saw it in the, in the first. I saw a lot of things in yeah, that yeah. montage. We, we we see it in flashbacks in the Superman and Lois series. Yeah, where he's got the Flasher suit on, which is cool. Really good. Mm. Yeah, I like that show. I should return to it. Mm. Seems as they're cancelling it at the moment or something, aren't they? Yeah, they fired half the people in it and whatever. Yeah, sure. They're like, yeah, now's the time. Yeah, I reckon. Perfect. Actually, now's the time. Watch it and and sign some petitions. Yeah. They'll bring it back. Don't exactly. Worry. Anyways, that's the end of the news, unfortunately. Um, oh, also what I was going to say, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, bring back we don't see much until the movie comes out. Yeah. I, I, it, like it wouldn't shock me if part of the reason, I mean one of the reasons that box office is declining for this sort of stuff is the movies are bad. But also. But we, if there was another reason. Yeah, but if there was another reason, what, like maybe a small part of that is because we see the entire movie you know before it comes out. Yeah. I know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's just there's a world conqueror and he's going to come down and the guy, the team, they don't they don't get along, but they're going to have to learn to work together. They're going to have to. The Marvels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so uh, when we come back in uh, later January, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully there'll be big news we'll be talking about all the time. <gasps> big news. Nearly a month's worth, Mason. Not oh. quite, but nearly a month's worth, but mm. not quite. Less what happened than... last year where we were like, oh, there won't be any news and then just... Something, a bunch of stuff happened. Did, what, did, did Warner Brothers acquire Discovery? Did Discovery acquire Warner Brothers? Oh, I can't remember. I don't know, something. A bunch, bunch of dumb stuff. I can look it up. If nah, you don't worry about it. Know. Nah, yeah, don't worry. Cool. All right, should we move it along? Yeah, let's do it. Whoa. Aquaman, two wet brothers. Oh, uh, yes. Finally in cinemas in Australia, Mason. That bloody took long enough. Didn't it, though? Yeah. We've been waiting with bated breath. We had to go. Bated, on... James. Oh, like a, yes. Like you'd bait a hook. That's, it's true. You could bait a hook, potentially. You could use a lure. Mm. But you wouldn't say you'd be waiting with lured breath. <laughs> it's true. A rubbery lured breath. Mm. Yeah. I've been waiting with fishy breath. Okay, sure, yeah. But that's your journey of breath. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> mm. On a budget of around two hundred and five million ish dollars, two hundred and five, very specific, and a marketing budget of whatever they saved on not rolling out a blue carpet for the premiere they didn't have. That's right, for the two bus ads in Melbourne. <laughs> that's what they spent it on. It had a forty million US opening weekend, which is less than the forty-seven million that the Marvels made. Oh no! Uh, it's stronger than some of the DC entries, including Blue Beetle. But if you look at the year for DC. And I guess comic book movies in general, with the exception of Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy yep. 3 and Spider-Man, where we're in the Spider-Verse, dire. <laughs> the Flash, Shazam 2, Blue Beetle, this. Now, this could always stay in positive, James. We're staying positive. We're staying positive in 2024. Exactly, mm-hmm. when we get there. Yeah. We don't have to be positive yet. No. <laughs> we're in the dirt of 2023, yeah. the tail end. So, But I feel like the way that Wonka has grown you know, and kept in cinemas, this could also continue to just kind of 
Because there's no other options. There's no other options. Except Wonka. Except Wonka. And Ferrari's and out. And Ferrari probably is out, I assume. I don't know. Yeah. Probably out January 19th in Australia because mm. that's how they do things here. I must build really fast car. That's, 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 that's hard. Ferrari. That's hard, though. Well, well I do it. <laughs> is he a Dracula? Yeah, he's from, he's, he's from Transylvania. <laughs> and yeah. he's a Dracula. Yeah, and he's a Dracula. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is great. Uh, what do you think the story was and does, ah. it, and does it involve Oracalcum? Oracalcum. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Oh, look, I want to do more Transylvanian Ferrari, but I'll say Sure, I mean, you, you, okay, fine. I'll, pe- I'll pepper it in later or earlier because we're recording this segment separate from the rest of the Correct. podcast. So maybe maybe earlier in the podcast there'll be some Transylvanian Ferrari and you'll have to... Got to have so. People will have to understand that. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's the story. All right, so... Okay, so it's, it's post-Aquaman 1 and post-Justice League and all that sort of stuff. Which Justice League? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Is it post? Is it the no, same? No, it has to be Whedon Justice Justice League. Why? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. But um, is it post the Flash where the Flash fell into a puddle? It seems like it's post the Flash where he fell into a but puddle. But isn't that a different Aquaman because that's the George Clooney universe? Oh, I don't know, man. Doesn't matter anymore. Maybe this is the George Clooney universe. Could be. Anyway, uh, he's a, he's, uh, Aquaman's a big-time hero. He's the king of Atlantis. Yep. And he's uh, he's got a kid and it's real tough because he's a single dad. I yep. mean- He's not a single dad. His wife is still around and alive. But, but it's tough for a single dad. She's not. She's she's just some. She, she's got four lines in this movie. <laughs> yes, in it way more than I thought. Yeah, we talk about it. He's a single dad and he's married to his own dad. Is what's <laughs> happening in this movie? Because he's always hanging out with his own dad. Yeah, he's hanging out with his dad. And, and he's like, like, "How did you do it, dad? Being a single dad." And he's like, "It's hard. Us single dads." Here's to single dads. <laughs> That's the line in the movie. <laughs> Yep. But guess what? Remember that time that he didn't kill Black Manta from the last movie? Well, Black Manta's back. I was, Manta. From memory, didn't he shatter his face? I mean, he does have the scar. Should I quickly watch that? Just yeah, just thing. just watch it really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna find well, out what he 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 left Black Manta and his dad, Dad Manta, yeah. in that submarine, and he's like, "I'm not rescuing you guys because you guys are mean, and I'm also mean and tough. Yeah, because I'm one of the tough guys. He is one. But of now them. he's a single dad. He's a single dad. That's, so that's hard. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, Black Manta's back. And he's found a he's he's got Back a, Manta. He's gonna find a magical trident yep. and a bunch of other stuff, and then he's gonna wage war on Aquaman and all the other guys. Uh, but there's uh, only one way to defeat Black Manta, and that's to get Ocean Master out of prison because he was in prison in the last one. Yeah, he was. And now he's we've got to get him out of prison. And even though he killed a lot of people, probably I don't really. remember. I don't remember either. Yeah. Um. It's it seems it's okay because they're brothers. Yeah. Oh no, he's in the post credit scene. So there you go. Great. He's back. I used to, yeah, yeah, okay. He's back, that. Manta. Yeah, as we know. Um, yeah, so he's, he's you know, you got to make the world safe for single dads everywhere. You got to. You know, so. Dad's having a tough out there. So that's the movie, especially this time of year. Yeah, you know. Um, now this movie begins with a thing that I really enjoy. I love being Aquaman. I'm a king of Atlantis. Nice. That? No, it starts with um when they when they take the the uh, studio logo. And they they make it a little bit different. Yeah, they do, don't they? Uh, and they so maybe maybe add it. You know, they, they some corral. Some yes, exactly. And they add, add some. You know, they they make it animated or mm. they make it appropriate to the movie in in question. But what I liked about this one is it's the Warner Brothers logo sunk to the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> covered in rusted barnacles. Yes, and it's like if that ain't a metaphor <laughs> for for the movie industry as a whole, just just an abandoned logo, just just ruined. And yep. no one cares. Yep. No one's going to bring it back to the surface. What's the point? <laughs> yeah. Let it go. So that didn't hook you in. Oh. Or, or lure you. It just didn't lure me in. The, the... But I thought this movie was pretty fun. It's Jeff. way better than I was led to believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not great. No. But it's it's a bit of fun. There's some, my, I went with my son. Uh-huh. He enjoyed it thoroughly. Has he seen the first Aquaman? No. He seen Blue Beetle and this. Okay, great. Those are the two live action comic book movies he's, he's seen. Just the tail end of yeah, <laughs> the fish tail end, <laughs> the a, shark tail end. Yeah, I think it's stronger than the first though. Yeah, from it, memory, it, every scene doesn't end with an explosion. Some do, some do though. Yeah, yeah. I reckon in a in a in an environment where we were getting kind of a hit comic book movie, superhero movie every few months. Yeah, I reckon it would be like yeah, this was a pretty fun time. Like generally, yeah. I, th- I think. But it's just now we're in the we're in the you know the back end of people the... have people don't want this at the moment. Yeah. This mm-hmm. if yeah if this came out four or five years ago probably would have done pretty well. I'd imagine. I think people would be like yes and I, oh we loved the last one or yeah. whatever we, we said remember about the last, the last one. one. We remember the last one and we're gonna remember this one. When oh, he's back, was... Manta. I didn't That's know that. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. It's just a different. Era. I think choices have been made, and yeah. I don't mean that negatively. I mean, and, and speaking, you know, love last week we talked about Rebel Moon. 
Mm. Actual choices have been made about the design of stuff. Yes. And it doesn't look like somebody just went on, you know, mid-journey and went, apocalyptic future imperial army, space <laughs> army, looks good, moody, yeah, sexy yeah. Nazis. Yep, exactly. You know, whatever. James Wan? Yes. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of great looking underwater worlds. There is. And we, you know, they're the different environments. Different and neon environments. Exactly. But there's like there's desert sequences, there's jungle sequences, there's like a James Bond villain-esque kind of volcano lair. Yeah, there is a volcano lair. There's, there's a, a Lord of the Rings moment. There's an underwater city that is built of abandoned pirate ships, which yeah. I thought was a cool look. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the sea creatures look cool. They do look cool. Costumes are good. There's an octopus. He's a friend of the people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, to- that's Topo. That's the, he's the-, the same one. Yeah. He's smaller than I thought. I thought he was really big. Oh. The last one. He's a little, oh, yes. he's a little fella. Oh, yes. Yeah. And everybody's back. Yeah. For the most part. For the most part. Willem Dafoe got the flu and died. <laughs> sure he did. Off yeah. screen. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I guess, if you care. Yeah. No one cares. Um, I, yeah, I think what works here the most in terms of like characterization is the pairing of Jason Momoa and Patrick Wilson. Mm-hmm. There's a fun kind of prison breakout sequence where they're in the desert and they're not they're not desert boys. Oh, that's true. Ah, uh, but they're, they're making a go of it and just they're bickering. And then they're jungle boys. Then they're, they're, not jungle jung- boys. they're not jungle boys. They're not either. volcano boys either. No, that's right. They're, they're fish boys. Yeah, and just the, the bickering and, and that. And I wouldn't even say like none of it's particularly laugh out loud mm. or inventive or even particularly – it's just it's their chemistry like drives yeah. that relationship. And again, we probably have to brush away – the many people that Ocean Master killed in the previous movie, which I don't remember. You remember when he screamed, I am the Ocean Master! I do remember that, yes. And he was for yeah, a time. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Who did most of the killing? Because in the last movie, he teamed up with Black Manta. Yeah. Who, who I, did? Don't, I don't know. I don't know, exactly. He killed yeah. a king, I think. He killed a fish king. Okay, sure. Yeah. Right. Um, Jimon Honsu was like our green fish man. He killed him. Oh, I see. And, and he did a bunch of other stuff. I'm, yeah, right, I'm right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nicole Kidman's here. She's like, hi, I love <laughs> underwater. I love yeah. that. Yeah, there's let a, me help you give birth in the water. There's a moment where Black Manta invades um, the underwater a- a- Aquaman, Aquaman City mm-hmm. and the defense are riding on robot sharks. Yes. And I'm like, love that. Me on robot sharks. That's shark, cool. Yeah. Mm, Big fan yeah. of that. Yeah. Because it's probably a thing that they used to do on, with real sharks. And then the other. sharks went on strike. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually cruel to, to us. This is cruel to us. Sharks. That's right. Yeah. It's the ASPCS. What's that? The Atlantean Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Sharks. Good, I think. BS, by sharks. BS. Yeah. I don't call it BS. I call it a good <laughs> fun moment. Oh, yeah. Um, also, I can't stress enough, I understand if people are like, I hate this. Sure, okay. But I don't think it's, like, I feel similarly to this in the Marvels where it's like, it's 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 all right, man. Yeah. It's okay. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's more fun than the Marvels. Yeah, As a probably. movie that I quite liked, I think the Marvels. I think Aquaman to me was was just more fun. Yeah, you know, it's a case of oh, uh, you know, the whole world's at stake and blah blah blah. But it's quite breezy, you know. Yeah, we don't we don't really think the world's going to end because what if they did? What if they did this movie? They're like, yeah, the DC Doesn't universe matter. Is, is ending. Doesn't so. matter. Doesn't matter if the world ended in this. Yeah. Um. So I guess we can talk about Amber Heard's role, and this is a slight spoiler, I guess. She's in it way more than I thought. My understanding was, and the internet led me to believe, that they were just going to kill her in the first scene. Maybe I led you to believe that. Maybe you did. Because that's what I guessed. You did send me a lot of uh, handwritten notes. Yeah, that's right. I got a lot of express post parcels, which was <laughs> just a yeah, handwritten note saying that. You think Amber Heard's going to live in this movie? Well, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> and this tin of mackerel. The next tin of mackerel is going to come a lot quicker. I'll tell you that, mate. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so she's she's technically in it mm. for most of this movie. Yes, but yeah, four lines and a lot of the scenes she doesn't really appear to be in the scenes with other people. Right. Like they'll just cut to her and she'll be like, "That's oracalculum, and that's bad. It's bad for the environment, or whatever." Mm. Yeah, she yeah, says sure, in sure, this. Sure. So they've really pared down. I wonder if they've done that. Do you think they did that in production, or do you think they did that in the edit? Uh, I would. Say, it feels like in the edit. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't know. You know, this, this movie's a mystery. I it's think a mystery they have, to me, Yeah, basically. I reckon they've. My guess would be because, again, there are a lot of scenes where Aquaman sits down with his dad and they share a Guinness branded beer. Yes. And they talk about how Which tough is it is. Guinness beer. and not beer, but sure. Go on, Mason. <laughs> Go on. Where they, where they sit down and they discuss. Would you call it canned Guinness or a can of Guinness? I would call it a can of Guinness. Yeah, you would. Anyone calling it canned Guinness is an insane man <laughs> who's never spoken a word before. <laughs> Who was born and then locked up in a cave. 
But before before they were locked up in a cave, somebody whispered canned Guinness in their ear. And when they emerged, they said that. And people were like, what? Have you not been part of society for the last 30 plus years? No, I haven't. Canned Guinness. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of scenes where they sit down and they talk about how tough it is being a dad. It's tough. And it kind of feels like these should be should have been scenes where Aquaman and Mira talk about how tough it is being parents. Yeah, but it's not. No, not at all. Because I think that I think that 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 feels like emergency stations reshoots where they're like, yeah, we got a we got a blank spot here where we need some emotional resonance. Yeah. What do we put in here? And that stuff and is what's cheap to do. And that stuff is easy to do because a lot of the conversations that he has about being a single dad, you just shoot it in a room. Mm. You know, it's not a big underwater sequence where you got to CGI right. everybody's hair floating about and and all of exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's an easy way to do it. Uh, there's a couple of new looks for Aquaman. I think they've beefed up his old suit a bit. Mm-hmm. Jason Momoa was like, I'm not doing shirtless abs anymore. This is a Blade 3 situation. Which I appreciate. It? Yeah, huh. I mean, he's looking big. It's a big suit. And there's some flashbacks to <laughs> yeah. previous movies. Yeah. Where, where they, you know, where he really he put the work in. Absolutely. And why why do you have to do it twice? You don't. Yeah. You don't and you shouldn't have to. <laughs> uh, he has his stealth suit as well. Uh-huh, sure. Uh, which is fine, I guess. And not really necessary, yeah. I don't think. There's not really any scenes where it's it's desperately important that he's invisible. He should have brought his trident with him for most of this movie because he doesn't. Turns out it's pretty integral Yeah. at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, and of course, Patrick Wilson is looking ripped as hell. He's looking ripped as hell. Yeah. He does a, but they did the they did they do the Chris Evans in yeah. Captain America one where they they body swap him with a real scrawny dude down and bring him and, be, and big him up again. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, the villain's good. Black Manta's back, and he's like, oh, "Revenge! I'm going to do some revenge." Yeah, it's time for revenge. I'm going to unlock a trident. And it's going to it's going to do a big Lord of the Rings on everybody. Mm-hmm. That just looks like like Sauron's. Castle, like that. The villain. Yeah, it's all just. I'm going to unlock Sauron. That whole yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Sauron with a big, with a big green smog filter over the front. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it's that guy from Game of Thrones or whatever who was also a, a seaman in that. Do you remember? It was a big sea guy. Vaguely, yeah, sure. that's true. Actually, mm. yeah. So that's fun, isn't it? All yeah. of that's fun and whatever. Yeah, look, and I think the action sequences are, are, are good. They're you know they could be they're a little bit predictable. Yep. But I think you know adding in the novelty of all the the, the undersea creatures and all the various crazy monsters and, and yeah. that sort of stuff. Jonathan, uh, speaking of Lord of the Rings, Jonathan Taylor Re- Thomas, Reese Davies. Oh yes, is uh, is, a, is a crab king. He's the crab king or yes. something, and he's just he was probably in the last one. Just, I, I, yeah, and he's. So, and he's got a he's got a mask that yeah, 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 slides yeah. down and up like he's bumblebee. Yeah, but Black Manta uh, has a bunch of you know, I I think like very kind of nineteen sixties Austin Powers kind of super spy equipment like a big rusting. hammer, rusting hammerhead shark kind of submarines yeah. with with a, with big bay windows so yeah. you can see out of them and like big wheels that you turn kind of dials little and... squid submarine shuttles with, with yeah that have like kind of um, wavy arms wavy kind of um, all-purpose tentacles yeah. that are good for swimming and flying and they're grabbing and shooting. And they're all great sorts for that, actually. Yeah, they they're actually really seem good. great for that. And they're yeah. powered by orocalcum, which is important. Oh, yes, that's right. Because what happens if you use too much orocalcum? Blows up, I think. No, Mason, it, ma- it makes the world too hot, which will oh. unleash Lord of the Rings on everybody. That's and true. That's yeah. not a good thing, mm. actually. Yeah. Yeah, you, did you, we're not paying attention. No. And um, what's his name? <laughs> the Black Manda's henchman's in this. What's his name? His name is Randall Park. Yeah, and he's a fun addition. Yes, he was in true. the last one and now he's back. And Yeah, just... Faffing about and whatever. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And all of those Everybody things. gets a go in a bunch of different universes. Sure. Randall Park's in this, he's in WandaVision. Yep. He's in other things. That's right. He's in the, he's in the office. He's Yaya Abdul Mateen because he's in this and he's also Dr. Manhattan. Yes. The Watchman. He's going is to he, be is Wonder he Marvel? Man. He's going to be Wonder he's, Man. He's going to be Or he was? Man. He was, I, that's right. I don't know whether that's right. still happening. I, I knew it was something, yeah. But he also called this movie clown work. <laughs> oh, he did too, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But in the sense of the elegant French art. That's what he meant, yeah. Yes. But I thought he was good. I thought he was good He's a very menacing, like he's a good physical presence. There's a moment where they're like, look, he doesn't even have his super suit anymore. And I'm like, is this not the super suit? He looks like like, a super suit. Oh, no, he's just wearing like a a latex rubber suit and a helmet. Whatever. But yeah, but he's pretty super actually. They could have made maybe the the power suit a different color or something. Sure. They do look quite I mean, because it still had the jet pack. So I just assumed that it was the... A similar-ish suit. Mm. Um, should we do some spoilers? Let's do some spoilers. I'm going to say best movie ever. Yeah, look, again, uh-huh. it's if... In the can... heyday of superhero movies, yeah. which we are now sadly behind, it seems, <laughs> yes. or, or I, I think this would... I think we would have been like, yep, yeah, this is a good addition to the to the, to the Good canon. enough. What a bit of, bit of fun, you know? We're not in the heyday, so what do you think of that? I think it's still good. Still fine. Yeah. 
again, I would say fine, not great. I think we've hit an, an, the point where people are like, well, let's let's put the boot in because this universe yeah. is failing and or it's, it's done. So. I think also we're at the point with, and I think with regular people who aren't weird online freaks like us, uh-huh, go on. that this isn't good enough as a movie to see. You know, like a lot of these ideas have been seen. Oh, yeah, he's a fish guy and whatever. Like we've seen this story uh-huh. uh, over the past 10 years, like many different variations. Yeah, uh-huh. So it's like it needs, to, again, we've talked about this, it needs to change. And this is just on the tail end of that. Oh, fish it, guy. It feels like, you know, like, like you remember the end of like the Fox Marvel run of like X-Men movies? It's sure. not as bad as that. Absolutely not. But no. it's that feel of like, this needs to become something else now. Right, okay. Yeah. Because there's too many world-ending threats? Yeah, that and just like the tropes and whatever and, yeah, uh, okay, and like sure, the, sure, the sure. banter and the, and the vibes and all of that is just yeah, yeah, like okay. too many bants. Yeah. yeah. I would have seen my one more movie of more bants. Well, you're not going yeah, no. to. You're not allowed with, with, to. With Aquaman and Orm, I think that would have been... Well, you're not allowed I to. Know. It's illegal. You'll go to jail. Is that what you want? So, yeah, best movie ever, bearing in mind that it is Aquaman 2. Bear that in mind. Okay. Yeah. Two wet boys having a go at it. They're having a go. Yeah. That's important. Spoilers. Mm. Um, so they unlock the, the king of Lord of the Rings and he goes, so the, so the, oh, so oh, the, yeah, the, the big is... overarching throt, uh, throt. Throt. Mm. The big uh, overarching threat is that um, Black Man finds this black trident, yep. which was... Uh, well, it's green, but yeah. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> black and then it's green. But it's got green powers. Oh, is, it, this, is this going to be a black versus gold dress situation, James? Because I think it's a black trident. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, and then it does shoots green. Does or shoot gives you a green vision. Yeah, but anyway, uh, Black Man finds the trident. He's digging around for stuff that he can use to kill Aquaman, and he yep. finds this black trident, uh, and it gives him a vision of a king in Atlantis who was the brother of the previous king, yep. I think. Oh, he's the brother of the Atlantean king. Yeah. And they have a big war and... Uh, like ye- like thousands of years ago or whatever. Thousands of years ago. They do ago. a Lord of the Rings at each that's other. That's exactly right. And then uh, the... Because the, he was using Orichalcum. That's exactly which which is bad. He shouldn't do it. It produces all those greenhouse gases. So yeah. But go on. Do. Sorry. Uh, and then uh, the he's defeated by the good guys and the good guys seal him in an icy prison under, under the earth. Yep. So he can never escape. So... But the king is sending his ev- the evil king is sending his evil thoughts into the black trident, yeah. and so Black Manor is gonna. He needs the blood of the uh, Atlantean royal family mm-hmm. to uh, unlock this king, and then he's gonna destroy the world with greenhouse gases. He's yeah. gonna emerge. Yep. Um, do a big Lord of the Rings on everybody. Gonna do a big Lord of the Rings on everybody. <laughs> and lo and behold, oh, they need Aquaman's son because, like, if not Patrick Wilson or Jason Momoa, mm. you get a little Aqua boy or Nicole Lad. Kidman. Oh, yeah, that's true. You couldn't have called Or is it only boys? Well, it depends. Is she from the direct line? Oh, she would be from the direct line. She'd have to be. Because yeah. of inbreeding. Yeah. Well, that and, like, because his dad is um, Boba Fett. So that's true, yeah. You don't need the DNA of Boba Fett. That's true, yeah. This isn't an Attack of the Clones situation. That's right. Um, so, yeah, they unlock him. And he's got his black trident. He's fucking loving it. He's yeah, like, finally, right. I'm back. But luckily, Aquaman has his super powerful trident, which he had in the previous movie. Mm-hmm. And he throws it. Yeah. And it destroys that trident and kills him. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. I guess, yeah, because that was a special trident, wasn't it? He had to talk to Julie Andrews Seymour. Well, it's a special trident, but it was also powered by Love. Brotherhood. Oh, yeah. Because Orm goes, here, throw the trident. Yeah. And he throws it at Aquaman, and then Aquaman throws the trident. If they didn't have that particular brotherly alley-oop, it wouldn't have worked, would it? It might have worked. No, I don't think it would have worked. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Because he caught the first trident. Yes. I just think he should have caught the second trident. With his other hand? Oh, he didn't have another hand. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it was missing hands. So I guess they got us there. Mm-hmm. Do you think they did that on purpose? Almost certainly, <laughs> For these yeah. conversations? Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> somebody won. You know what? And that's why I like this movie. Because clearly <laughs> somebody someone, thought about somebody it. on set or somebody in the script or whatever went, why wouldn't he just catch the second trident? And then James Wan just went, well, let's just say he only had one hand. Yep. It was cold and his hand broke off. Well done, James Wan. And that's right. Pretty good stuff. Flawless, bulletproof logic. Yeah, then they all stand on an iceberg and congratulate each other. That's right. On the good work that they did. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Orm's free. That's right. He's free to live in the human world and be a beautiful blonde man at the beach. Uh, Shouldn't trust an adult blonde man. You don't think? No, I don't think so. You don't think they naturally exist in the real world? No, I think they do. I think they're evil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Andy Matthews. Oh, yeah. You yeah. do. You have provided data. Because normally, like, they don't stay blonde either. You get a blonde kid. Yeah. Then they're growing out of that. That's right. I don't know what's going on. Mm. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, so the post credits of this, which people say is a very fitting end. There's a lead. No, there's a lead up. Oh, of course. So earlier is. in the movie. Imagine if there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> earlier in the movie, 
uh, they're, they're, they're Orm and Aquaman are doing some brotherly bonding in the jungle, yep. and Aquaman says two things: one, you've got to you've, you've got to you've got to go out in the earth, and you have to you have to eat a delicious... you have to eat tacos and burritos yeah, and nachos right. and yeah, and muy bueno. Yeah, and you have right. to eat a big greasy cheeseburger. Yep. And Orm's like, I'm um, I'm human racist, and I won't eat any cheeseburgers. <laughs> but uh, Aquaman's like, Nah, you got it. It's going to be good. the human racists would love you, Orm. Actually, <laughs> I think you should uh, you'd fit right in yeah, with yeah, human yeah. racists. Yeah, uh, and then but then Aquaman's like, oh, you should try this delicacy, and he hands him a cockroach, a live cockroach yeah. that's on a leaf, and he eats it, and he's like, all right. And then at the in the post credit sequence, he's he's out on a some sort of some sort of jetty, yep. which is also a burger joint, yep. and he orders a cheeseburger and he bites it, and he's like, "This is pretty good." And then he sees a cockroach, mm-hmm. and he puts the cockroach. This the is in the post credit. Yeah, yeah. This, is this is the post credit. Circle back around. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he puts the cockroach in the burger and he eats it with a big crunch, and he's like, "That's good stuff." Yeah, that's the stuff. The end. First of all, why is there a cockroach at this burger restaurant? Why isn't there? Well, this is fair enough. I think that's very reasonable. <laughs> I think it's fine. Okay, that's great. So the joke doesn't work if there's no cockroach. I know. If they cut back to it, he's just eating the burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if they cut, what if he's eating the burger and then there's a freeze frame, like in one of those old movies at the end, and there's just like a text line that says, or oh, wish there was a cockroach there that he could put in his burger and eat it. Because he got a, quite a taste for cockroaches. He certainly did, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, just looking at that guy in this movie, because I know Jason Momoa thought this as well, like he would have made an excellent traditional look Aquaman. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Which I guess is what they went for in, in casting him in the first place. Yeah, and they, yeah. they, they, you could go with that idea of Aquaman of like he's, He's got a pomposity to him, yes. because he lives in, in the ocean and he doesn't have, he doesn't know human ways, and then he kind of learns humility, yeah. and then he becomes more in tune with humanity, which is what Orm's character arc sort of has been. Yeah, um, but you're right. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't matter because whatever I guess this is yeah, now yeah. finished. Yeah, and also, uh, and and uh, black man who is defeated. Well, the the king is defeated, and then black man is also defeated, mm. and um, so then, but then he's about to fall into a big. About to, about to fall into a big crevasse yep. or Indiana crevice. Jones style. I'm not sure. And then Aquaman, this time, instead of leaving him, puts out the hand of friendship and brotherhood. He's yep. like, why don't you be our third brother? That's what he says. Yep. You should be our third bro, our third yep. aqua bro. Yeah. You weren't born of the ocean, but you live in the ocean, and yeah. that's enough for us because we're aqua bros. Yeah. And then you did Bla- try to cave my head, my son's head in with an axe. But then again, my actual brother did try to kill me last time as well. I and think. this time, just and this, Yeah, yeah, just moments ago. <laughs> So anyway, that's good enough for me. We can be aqua bros. And then Black Man is like, nope, I'm going to leap off. You're an aqua bog. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leap into this crevasse and I'll see you in the sequel, he says. That's what he says. It's what he says. <laughs> and then it's over. Mm-hmm. And he gets a ride on a seahorse uh, to get out of there. I don't feel like the seahorse would make him any faster. Yeah, I feel like in my opinion, the Atlanteans, especially Aquaman and Orm, are really fast. Yeah, but they need ships sometimes. That's true. And that's it's interesting. True. It's interesting. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, let me think about this movie. James, let me think about this movie. Just let's take listen, a breath. Listen, we don't take, need to think about this movie anymore. I like thinking okay? about it. It's nothing. the end of the DCEU. I thought it was pretty good. Oh, uh, I was wrong. Nobody dies in this movie. Nobody important. No. I mean, Black Manta probably, but. Yeah, and the king, yeah. the, the evil king. Yeah, but what was he? That's true. Like but a, I, my, I guess, I guess. A lot of people were like, they're going to kill the baby. And I'm like, there's no, no way. way. There's no way they're going to kill the baby. If I, anything, they were going to kill Mira. Like, yeah, that, that's that the thing. I, my, my impression was they were going to kill Mira. They didn't. I think they went out of their way. And again, I think there might have been some reshoots so no one dies in this. Sure, okay. I think they probably were like. If we're wrapping it up. Yeah, I think, they, I think if they were like in an ongoing universe, we probably would have killed Aquaman's dad. Yeah. Because they're, you know, he gets. He gets, he gets skewered by Black Manta. It did look like they were going to kill in a, him. In a burning house. And he goes, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. But he didn't. That's true. And then, But then he's saved by Atlantean yeah. oxygen tent or whatever it is. God. So I think I think they were like. I hope they were just pumping water into him. <laughs> seawater. <laughs> that's right. Don't worry, we've got all our technology. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this man needs seawater. <laughs> a lung full of seawater. Um, yeah. Mm. Oh, that was pretty fun. Uh, I got some reviews here. Go on. This one from Benson Mate says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Would you agree Aquaman 2 had a better wrap-up to the DCEU than The Flash? Hope Juan and Gunn can keep some of the tone for the new DC universe. Also, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we didn't wish people Merry Christmas last time. I didn't want to. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. well, I knew we couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> because of, you know, the world. Joe Biden. We're not allowed. We're not yeah, allowed we're anymore. We're not allowed anymore. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a better wrap-up. Also, I like this movie way better than The Flash. It's doing less than The Flash. 
Somehow. Like it's trying to do less. Yeah, somehow, yeah. even though despite there's a lot of different things happening in this movie. Yes, uh-huh. But no, I, look, again, not great, but a, <laughs> but, a, not, but it's not even a conclusion. It's just the last movie. Yeah, sure is. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. But what, I mean, you know, that. I don't know, what do you want? Yeah, exactly. That's too much pressure to put on one director who was told, make this Aquaman movie. Yeah. And then the entire industry collapsed around him and he went. <laughs> I don't know, man. Do you want me to put the multiverse in this? Yeah. Like, I don't know. We don't care. Well, was it because Ben Affleck was supposed to be in it at one point? Yeah. And Michael Keaton was going to be in it at another point, and they took all of that out. Yeah. I'll, also, I think I predicted that Aquaman was going to meet Lobo at the end of this. Oh. Nice credits, but that didn't happen, of course. Well, that, you must feel pretty bad about I that. I did feel awful. Yeah. Uh, Nate says, just watch both Aquaman movies back to back. Oh, Jesus. Back to back, Aquaman. Uh, and I'm convinced that James Wan doesn't know how to end a conversation without an explosion. Jason Momoa and Patrick Wilson are fun together. Um, yeah, uh, this has less any conversation in explosion, but it does happen a couple of times. That's true. Uh, I think it, someone even says something at some point. Aren't they like, this always happens? Or uh, yep. why does this always happen? Yeah. Didn't this happen in the last movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't this happen in the last movie we were in? Yeah. Aquaman. Uh, C Ray says, I would have watched, uh, I would have fully watched a Black Manta movie. RIP to the DCEU, though. Um, yeah, I guess I'll watch a Black Manta movie. Sure. I mean, we have kind of yeah. anyway. We had two. Yeah. And Nate Harris says, James is going to hate Aquaman 2, not because of the bad effects, terrible dialogue and sloppy pacing, because it's literally just the man needs baby to free trapped evil spirit plot of Ghostbusters 2. Oh, well, I didn't hate it, and I forgot that those these things are connected <laughs> until just now. Wow. Mm. What a time to be alive. We're on the precipice of a new universe, Mason. Oh, my God, isn't that exciting? Mm, yes, and I'm glad we're having a year, but at least a year, two years between movies. I can talk about in between then. Rebel Moon 2? We'll talk about Rebel Moon 2. Yeah. And then 3, 4, etc. And yeah, then nice. the extended cuts of all of those. Oh, I can't wait. Where it's Star Wars, but it's got boobs and blood. Whoa. Whoa, can you imagine? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's, we've got to move this all right, to let's a different move it on. thing. I had one final thought about Aquaman. You don't have to have it. I know, but I think it's This important. is one final thought for the rest of your life, though, right? About Aquaman? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Final thought, uh, which I, I, I noted down at the time, but I didn't say it in the review, is um, he gets more piss in his mouth than you'd expect. Even for Aquaman, <laughs> yeah. who's swimming around but in, it's also, in, in the ocean and it's mostly piss. Because he points it out. It's mostly animal piss. He points it out or you see it directly. Fish happening. piss and so forth. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of above ground yeah. piss in the mouth. Do you think like, because they're, they're all in the same room underwater yeah. and they're sitting at a big fish council. Yeah. They're just all drinking each other's piss. Yeah, because they're right? all pissing, yeah. 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 Anyway, I guess it's not even it's not even excessive amount of piss for a DCEU movie. Oh, because of um, because of all the piss in Batman v Superman. Yeah, that's one jar of piss, but, but it's a lot. This is streams of piss. Yeah, that, multiple oh, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Sometimes magically yeah. imbued with magic. I would love to know if somebody could do a calculation in terms of like how what's the quantity of piss in this movie compared to Batman v Superman, or or perhaps the quantity of piss in various universes, like the total amount of piss in the DCEU versus the total amount of piss in the MCU, for example. Was there any piss in the MCU? Maybe. We don't know what kind of universe I bet there's a guy is. pissing off a bridge or something. I bet there's a guy. There might be. Yeah. Maybe they don't piss in that universe. Maybe it's all number twos. We don't know. <laughs> it's true. It's a different universe. Maybe it's a third thing. Maybe it's a third, even worse thing. <laughs> something yeah, to think about. That's right. But we don't have time to think about that now, Mason, because now we're looking at the best and worst things of the year that we've experienced in media. The, not just in life. No, but some of them. The Weekly come Planet Awards. Yes, that's right. 2023. Now, as mentioned, Rob Collins was kind enough to put all of this together and also take into account, uh, into account people's you know, own personal preferences and uh-huh. that. Uh, with each of these results, I believe, as well, people could add something extra if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Some Sometimes that would make it in. Yep. So it's like... Best and worst from Marvel and DC, video games. Yeah, I have gone through this, believe it or not, Mason. I already know what I'm going to say for most of these, I think. I'm flying blind. Yeah, cool. I'll say whatever. Yeah, I cool, don't care. man, cool. So we're going to kick things off yes. with the best of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thanks for everybody bo- who voted, by oh, the way. Oh, by the way, yeah. Thousands of votes. 4,000 votes, which might be more or less than last year. I don't sure. know. Yeah. Are we are we, are we we peaking? Are we dropping off or are we back better than ever? Man, I don't we remember. Don't, we don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll certainly remember next year. It'll Definitely. Like, oh, 3,998. Oh, we're in trouble. No, we're in yeah. trouble. <laughs> we should have voted us too. Pack it up. Yeah. So we've got the five Marvel Cinematic Universe things that happened this year. were That's Ant-Man right. and the Wasp Quantumania. Boo. Guy Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yay! Secret Invasion. Boo! Loki Season 2. Yay-ish. And the Marvels. Oh, we're all right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in terms of results that, that go on. I'm going to guess the audience, uh, big time Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 fans. That's right. Coming in at 77%, followed by Loki at 19%. Mm-hmm. Then at Mar- then the Marvels at 3.4%, and then Quantumania and Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion got 11 votes. 
I think... Who did that? Right? I think that is the perfect lineup. I yep. think that's exactly right. Uh, I did like Loki season Me too. two, but I didn't... You know, I, I don't think it... I don't think it hit the heights of the first season. No. Uh, it could have, I think. You're saying it didn't. It didn't. Uh, but I'm saying Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is probably... Probably the high point of Marvel this year, yep. and it and it you know it capped off a saga for a lot of people that trilogy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know it was the it was the final piece in the in the Infinity Saga for a lot of people, so it makes makes a lot of sense, you know. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, next up, we've got best of the DC Extended Universe. You want to read those ones out, Mason? I do. Aquaman from... Two: The Lost Kingdom. Oh, we just saw that. That's right. A lot of piss in it. Yep. Uh, Blue Beetle, <laughs> not as much piss. No. The Flash. Metaphorically, a lot of piss. A lot of piss in that one. And Shazam, Fury of the Gods. God, this is dire, isn't it? <laughs> and last year, of course, we had Peacemaker, TV series Peacemaker. Yep. And uh, and and Black Adam. Those were the two. <laughs> that was the only two. And Peacemaker won with ninety five percent of the votes somehow. Not That's what I voted for. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Not what I would have picked. Look for me. Hang on, my mum's calling back. Someone uh, might be for dead. real. Yeah. Oh my god. Hello. Oh, sorry. No, I'm recording with uh, my good friend Nick Mason on our podcast, The Weekly Planet. All right. See ya. Bye. I had to turn down coffee with my family. I was going to say, that that's it? <laughs> that was it? Everyone's alive? We're going for a little coffee? I can go, go for a coffee anytime I want. Not now, you can't. No, that's true. <laughs> Damn it. The only time in my life when I can't go for a little coffee. <laughs> but it's all right, James, because we're, we're debating. It's okay because we're hotly debating the best yep. of the DCEU. All um, right, so it's obviously not The Flash, no. right? Can we both agree on that? We can absolutely agree I would on also that. say it's not Shazam 2. Correct. I like Blue Beetle. I, I think it's charming yeah. in Blue Beetle, but I I think it look, both of these, the remaining contenders, Aquaman 2 and Blue Beetle, I think they skew very closely to like just a very classic superhero movie. Yeah. And depending on, you know, your feelings on that, that's either like quite boring and cliched or like yes. this is why you go to the movies kind of thing. The, the first one for me. The first one for you. But I for me personally, maybe it's recency bias. It almost certainly is, but for me it's probably Aquaman 2. I like the Blue Beetle design. I think it's... Yeah, I'm going to say Blue Beetle because at least it was a new character, Great. I guess, technically, mm-hmm. I guess. And I like the lead performance yep. and all of that. I think there was some fun Blue Beetle stuff in it. I'm like, oh, it's the ship. Oh, it's the old Blue Beetle costume. Oh, it's the, the grandma. She's a murderer. That's enough for you me. Know, pretty and good. again, I thought Aquaman 2 was fine. Uh, Blue Beetle actually did win with 67%. There you yeah, go. Followed good. by the Flash at 19%. Who's responsible for that? Who did that? That sounds like somebody's gamed the numbers. They've, yeah. gone, they've gone some sort of made some backroom deals and some <laughs> sort of camp. I don't like it. I'm Sh- mad about it. Shazam 2, 11%. Aquaman 2, 7%. I think that's a recency bias. I don't think Aquaman But in reverse? Does. Yeah, exactly. It should get in less. In a bad space. way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So there you go. Oh, my goodness. This is a new one. Best of the Barbenheimer universe. Yeah, once in a lifetime pairing. Barbie and Oppenheimer. God, how do you even compare these? Yeah, right. I saw them one after the other Uh huh. Um, in the order of Oppenheimer, then Barbie. Oh, I think I did the reverse. Whoa. That's right. I'll do anything. That's a real recency bias yeah. situation. Because I'm going with Oppenheimer, I think. Okay, well, then I'll say Barbie because why not? But right. I thoroughly enjoyed both of them. Mm-hmm. Which one would you be more likely to revisit? Oppenheimer. Which one would you more likely watch with your dad? Oppenheimer? Mm. Even the sex stuff? That's a great point. That's a great <laughs> question. I also think I, my parents did see Barbie and Oppenheimer. I think they, did liked, they? Oh, they liked both of them. This is so. why these movies did well. I know. Because they got everybody's parents in. That's right. So, sure, I'll say Barbie then. Barbie, 51.4%. Oppenheimer, 48.6%. Ooh. Right down the line. That's a classic result. Like us. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a big one. This is a big one, Mason. Oh, it is. It's, I mean, it's not for anyone else, but for us. For this particular community, I think this is a big one. This is a big one. 4,000 votes probably. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is it? This is best hair or wig. Yes. Uh, last year, we both voted for Timothy Oilerfant in the book of Boba Fett. Yep, that's right. That's a good call, that's I correct. think. But here's, here's some options for you, folks. Yep. Anson Mount in Strange New World Season 2. Yep. David Tennant in the Doctor Who special. He says bigger than ever. Mm. Margot Robbie in Barbie. Okay. Uh, Jazz Sinclair in Gen V. I'm loving all this. Ray Stevenson in Ahsoka. Oh I'm thinking God. that's hair and beard. Yeah, that's, that's, a com- that's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Uh, Ryan Gosling in Barbie. Yep. Shay Wiggum in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. I'm loving this one. Mm. It's a it's a bit of an outsider. You know, it's not what you you brought me you brought this to my attention. Mm. And yeah, you're it's right. Good. It's a really it's good, good one. Right? Uh Taika Waititi, Our Flag Means Death season ah, 2. Yeah, I guess. Uh, and Tom Blythe in the 3 Hour Hunger Games prequel. <laughs> no, not that one. No. And look, I'm going to also eliminate Look, Ray Stevenson's is good. It's fine though, right? It's good. It's good. If, if you took away the beard, he'd just be a man with regular hair. Yeah. Rest in peace. All right. A man with regular hair. 
Uh, Barbie, I mean, Margot Robbie has great hair. Sure. But I mean. But what's what's different or spectacular about uh, it? No, not for me. Yeah. Uh, Anson Mount, like he's always a contender. Yeah. He's not doing anything different with it this year. But don't you think there's a consistency to this that we should take into account? I think you've got grey hair <laughs> recency bias, James. <laughs> Because you're looking at that and you're like, you're am, like yeah. this is everything I aspire to be. I'm at best days. I you're wish. Thinking, I wish I'm I Anson could Mount. Pull that off. You know? Um, and David Tennant, I mean, he's back and his hair is bigger than ever. It is bigger than ever. But is it like, did you look at it and go, wow, this I is blowing did. me away? Okay. Actually, I'm like, it shouldn't work, and and it and it but it does work. And I'm and I'm like, maybe I could make my hair do a bit like that, but I then I'm like, no, that's like an hour of professional yes. stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. You have to you have to pull out every individual strand yeah, and like clip it, it together. and spray it and yeah. wait and all that. And I'm like, oh, okay, what about this then? Yes. Because Shea Wiggum's hair, it's looking good, and he's an everyman. He's running about. That's yeah. an achievable hair. I think so. Of a regular looking guy, yeah. just making it work for him. Ryan Gosling's can hair is upsetting, and I know it's supposed to be. Yep. Like, and it's got that comb down. I don't, I don't like it at all. Yep. Okay. He, he, like his whole vibe is. I mean, it's great, but yeah, it's it's but upsetting. Don't like I don't it. like it at all. Yep. Um, Hunger Games, no. For me, it's, it's for me, it's a tie between David Tennant and Shea Wiggum, but I think I'm going to go with Shea. What about Jazz Sinclair? He's got Wig in his name. Like Jazz Sinclair, like that's a spectacular head of hair. That is true. Mm. And we'll keep that in mind for next year. See how it evolves. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, look. Um, I'm going to go. With <laughs> also, I didn't finish watching Gen V. Okay. But I definitely finished Dead Reckoning Part One. Certainly. Well, I'm going to say Anson Mount, but not for the reasons that you said, for my own reasons, personal reasons. Oh, secret personal reasons <laughs> yeah. that have nothing to do with the fact that you're both, you're both grey kings. <laughs> you're both monochrome kings, James. Well, Mason, you were right because Shay Wiggum came in at 17%. Nice. God, yep. this is a tight field, Mason. Mm. Ray Stevenson, 16%. David Tennant, 15%. Mm. Margot Robbie, 14%. Anson Mount, 12%. Wow. Some huge contenders this year. Agreed. I wouldn't say there's any particularly standout ones, though, this year, I would say. I feel like Timothy Olfen is like, that's a clear winner. Right, okay. We've spent yeah, longer yeah. than this on anything else. Well, and, we, and we'll <laughs> never spend any longer on anything else, ever. But, of course, this leads into... Because Shea Wiggum's hair is it's quite tall. Yeah. And you'd be like, is it too tall? No, it's perfect. It's not too tall. It's not too tall. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay, worst hair or wig. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Okay. Uh, last year, some contenders were Scar from She-Hulk. Which I that voted awful, for. Yeah, yeah. And you Spider voted. and Avatar 2 because it's a white man with dreadlocks. Yep. And the listeners voted for Hawkeye in Avengers Endgame. <laughs> just, just, it's just always in there. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, contenders this year, Beast in the Marbles, that CGI oh, monstrosity, spoiler alert. I don't think that's terrible. Yeah, no, it's fine. I think it captures like the comic book yeah. X-Men 97 vibe. Good. Yeah, I think yeah, the yeah. CGI model is not great of the mm-hmm. character, but I yeah. think the look is fine. Uh, ben Affleck in Air. Yep, that's upsetting. Uh, David Tennant. He's, get, he's getting two Guernseys. What's happening here? Worst. Who did this? Fascinating. Evangeline Lilly in Quantumania. Yeah, she had that's the big atro- Karen that's hair. That's atrocious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greasy Barry Allen in The Flash. So young Barry Allen. Nah, yeah, slightly fun. younger. Whatever, I guess. Uh, Henry Cavill in the Argyle trailer. He's got that flat top. I like it. He would. I don't. I like. I don't like it. Yeah, but I don't look at it and go, "That's disgusting." I do. Okay. Uh, Jay Baruchel in Blackberry. He's got a, for, if you haven't seen it. That got is disgusting. Some long sort of blonde, like swept over yep. situation. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Rosario Dawson in Ahsoka. Because it's upsetting. What is it? And it is, it's two big flesh sacks yep. is what it is. Yep. Uh, Tom Blythe, once again, in uh, in Three Hour Hunger Games prequel. But this is him with his head shaved. Yeah, this, the accompanying photo is the M&M hair. This is a better look for him, though. I, I think, think, yeah. Mm, no, I like the long hair. Yeah? But I don't think it's good enough to win any awards. Oh, I completely agree with mm. you on that one. And, of course, Hawkeye again. Yeah. <laughs> is, the, is the meta going to win for the listeners? That's a great question. Um, I'm going to go with, God, that Ben Affleck hair is really bad. But the thing is it's supposed to be. Yeah. I think the Evangeline Lily hair, I'm going to pick that one. I, I don't, also I think don't that like as well. it. It's yeah. like, what are you, a hobbit? What is this? For me, it would be a tie between Evangeline Lily and Henry Cavill, but oh, Argyle wow. isn't out yet. Okay. Like, he's a contender for next year. Sure. I think he's a clear – I think he's – I think he's in the running. If you had a mustache, would that change it for you? Because that's Chris Evans' look in The Grey Man. Ooh, no, I don't think it would change it. No, mm. I'm, I'm steadfast. Well, I think he... it's Evangeline Lilly because she's had gr- she's had greater hair. She's had better hair in the previous movies and in life. True. And they've just gone with well, she's slightly older, so we have to give her the the matted down Karen hair. And yeah. I th- have they gone? We have to justify why she wears the helmet. She has to wear. I guess. Or is it because there's. 
Is it because Cassie is in the movie and they need they to distinguish both have them? Long hair. They can't both have long hair. Maybe mm-hmm. that's it. But anyway, big mistake. Great. Huge mistake. Um, so the winner is Hawkeye at 40%. Of course it is, yeah. He's done it again. Mm-hmm. Followed by Evangeline Lilly. Yeah. Lilly at 17%. So then, that's the first real one. Yeah. And then Henry Cavill, 16%. And Greasy Bar- Barry Allen, 13%. And Jay Baruchel, 7%. Yeah, right. Uh, that Jay Bar- Baruchel one is really, it's pretty terrible though. And it changes multiple times throughout that's the movie. That's true, yes. So not a terrible movie. Mm. Terrible hair. Oh, oh here's an award this for is us. a new one. This is a yeah, new one. Yeah, thank you, Rob Collins, for including this one. Yeah. This is an award for the most normal man of the year. <laughs> Who has been the most normal this year? Just a normal man doing normal things. <laughs> and here's our options Bob Chapek. <laughs> yep. These are all executives, pretty much. Not all. Oh, you know those. Okay, right. Mm, they're all executives of a type. Sure. They have executive true. mindset, don't they? Yeah, all well, you people. gotta. You gotta. Okay, Bob Chapek. So that's former Disney yep. CEO. Yep. Bob Iger. Current. Yeah, yep. David Zaslav of Warner Brothers Discovery. Psycho. President Donald Trump. I mean, he's just doing the same. I yeah. feel like we're just, he's just playing the hits Remember at that this one point. time he didn't? Oh, with the hair? Yeah. I'm not talking about hair. We're oh, just yeah. Talking- <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still on hair. Remember the time, I remember he, changed the time his, he did it? He did it once. Yeah. And it was like a, it was a, a slicked d- back and different actually, look. Didn't it didn't look terrible. I, um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Elon Musk, very normal. Yep. Uh, Ike Perlmutter. Which yep. one's he again? Wait, which one's he's he? He's the former Marvel guy. Remember the guy? Oh, yeah, he's awful. He's Donald Trump's friend. Yeah, yeah, he's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the, forgot which. The, the haunted photo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff Bezos. Yep. J.K. Rowling. Yep. Mr. Beast, Tom Cruise, <laughs> and The Rock. All right. Not uh, on here, yeah. interestingly, is um, the meta guy. Facebook. Oh, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Did he he get built a, of... a compound this year. Or of course he's, he did. He's all like an underground thing. All right. Well, I'm going to. They're going to fill your air vents with cement. Definitely. And that's good. Zuckerberg. <laughs> So they're just going to do that. All right, I'm going to straight up eliminate Mr. Beast, Tom Cruise, The Rock. Okay, sure, uh, sure, sure. The entertainers. Yeah. Are they doing any real damage? Not Who's to the to extent say? of others, I yeah, would say. Right. You know, a lot of them are putting good things out in the world. J.K. Rowling's just on, the, she's stuck in turf brain mode. Yeah. She's just, that she's gear is the, just jammed. And the and gear is jammed. The gear always gets jammed. <laughs> and then they can't do anything else. Don't go down that life. road. You'll never, never get out of it. That's your whole life now. Now yeah. you've got to do this forever. Forever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but and she's bad. Yeah, I don't like her, and all her work is terrible. But <laughs> she hasn't switched gears in years. No, this it's isn't the same. new. I no. don't think. I feel the same about Elon Musk. Mm. And the only reason he's kind of up front is because he built Twitter. Oh, he bought Twitter. He didn't build anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's boring to me. He's boring. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. So I'm going to eliminate that. Even when he posts a photo of his bedside table or whatever, and it's got diet cokes and a. <laughs> A fake sci-fi gun. And I mean, he's like, that's look fun. At my, look at my bedside. Table. And the time he said, like, this is just like the guy Blade Runner or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's like, does he think the guy's name is Blade Runner or is this a joke? Or I was can't it the tell. time when he was like, I don't drink alcohol, but sometimes I have a fine. I like to look at a fine wine or whatever it was. God, remember that one? Normal men. Yeah, yeah. But he had not. Yeah, I don't think he's really done anything. Nah. This year, it's all just him replying to really deranged. Yeah. Tweets and going like, interesting. Yeah. Ooh, true. Racism. I like that. I like that. <laughs> my thing. Uh, Ike Perlmutter, whatever. Jeff Bezos, same shit. Yeah. I think for me the standout. Jeff Bezos hasn't even gone to space this year as far as I know. What the fuck's he, he doing? Even, he didn't even go to space this year and come back with a cowboy hat. And we're all like, did you get that in space? Yeah. Jeff and Bezos? also I think it was last year that I heard his real voice, as in 2022. Mm. And, like, that was shocking to yeah. me. But he was like, hi, I hope you're bad. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, shit, you walk around like that? I didn't know. I thought mm. he had a normal man's voice, but he doesn't. He doesn't. Um. So whatever. It, but I think it's Zaslav. If you look yeah. at – I mean, I guess the same could be applied to Bog, Bob, Bob, Bog Iger. To Bog, Bog Iger, Iger, yeah, yeah. But Zaslav, like the way that he approached the strikes and then the way that he's gutting Warner Brothers, yeah. throwing movies aside, just saying insane things. Well, that's the thing as well. <laughs> it's not even just that he's destroying this company and they're paying him to do it. Yeah. Like they changed the conditions of his of his contract to be like, the more of this you destroy, the more money you get. And he's like, well, I will then. <laughs> I will. The, but the fact that he's... He's saying these weird things where he's like, I think people are enjoying this. You know, like he's got yeah. that vibe of like, I think this is this is going to work out really well for everybody. Who? <laughs> who, David Zaslav? The people who like this stuff because they're not getting it. The people who work there because they're all getting fired. Yeah. What? What is it? And is it like at the end with the, when I mean, after the strikes all came, you know, but it all was over, he was like, I think it was good actually. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, what? <sighs> or didn't he say something along the lines of like, Oh, well, it's actually because they're, they're demanding too much or something. Yeah. It? It was, it was, there was yeah. one of those, wasn't there? There were a few of them said that. I wish that. I had a bunch of quotes up here, but uh, yeah. I'm just going to have to imagine them and we make some We talked about up. it earlier in the Yeah, year. yeah, I think it's, yeah, it is Zaslav, absolutely. All right, let's see what we got. 
What do the people think? Elon Musk, uh, 34%. That's not bad. Fair enough. Yep. David Zaslav, 29%. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mr. Beast, 8%. Tom Cruise, 8%. Uh, Bob Iger, 4%. I had the idea of a Mr. Beast video the other day. Go on. And it's just, I killed your dog. <laughs> Okay, just, sure. And it's just him. <laughs> he's just he's got he's got to kill he's making your dog. The soy face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what? It's not I killed a hundred dogs. It's I killed your dog. Right. Okay. Is this some sort of system where he's killed everybody's dog? I don't know. He's, he, because how? Because sometimes he's like I'm locked in a supermarket, but what he's done is locked somebody else in a supermarket. Oh, I see. So I don't know whether he's sending. Whether he's getting people to kill their own dogs, I don't know what he's my doing. My thing would my assumption there would be. That he's killed a bunch of people's dogs, <laughs> yeah. and then there's something to do with IP ad- addresses. So when you click the video, it takes you to your specific one where he's killed your oh, dog. Okay. I'd like to think that if you click on it, you have to kill somebody else's dog. So it's like a all these are it's great like a, things. It's like a Jane. chain letter. Yeah, sure. When you kill each other. Bring dogs. back the chain letters. I did a chain letter for a hundred thousand people. And they had to kill us <laughs> someone's dog. I don't like it, James. No, I don't like it either. I wish he didn't and you didn't and nobody killed anybody (laughs) else's dog. Completely agree. That's right. What's next? Uh, The next one is best villain of the year. Oh, my God. Uh, And here we go. Bowser from Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. The Cocaine Bear from Cocaine Bear. The titular Cocaine Bear. Jason Momoa's Dante. He's fun. The genie from Fast X. (laughs) Yeah. Godzilla from Godzilla Minus One. That's a good one. Uh, Hugh Grant's Forge from Dungeons and Dragons. Too comical to be uh, for me. Like that's a fun guy. Yeah, but right. Is that, right. Does that does that aid it though? Lighthearted, but that's, I mean it works. It works in the context of the movie. It's yeah, a lighthearted very adventure with some dead wives or whatever. Yeah. Um, the High Evolutionary from Guardians Volume Three. Oh, that's 3. a good one. Uh, Gabriel and the Entity from Mission Impossible. Sure, yeah. Nick Cage's Dracula from Renfield. Yeah. Oppenheimer from Oppenheimer. Oh, my God. Mm, interesting. Some people probably think he's a hero. Yeah. But it's in a way, it's more complicated. That's how the movie works. Yeah. yeah. No, Mason, it's oh, the way no. I think. Ooh, the patriarchy from Barbie. Damn, finally Ooh. getting them. Uh, the spot from Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, yes, but also, is that what that movie's even about? Like, for me, I'm oh, not yeah, like, no, that's, true. that's the thing in the yeah, movie. Yeah, you're you know? absolutely right. Yeah. Showing your hand early there, Jones. You're welcome. Uh, Scourge from Transformers Rise of the Beast. Whatever. You know, that one that turned into a truck or a <laughs> car or a ice cream van or whatever or a jet or a helicopter. He took his face off at the end. Did he? Yeah. Good. That's great for That him. happened a couple of times it's this great year. for him. Yeah. Uh, Superfly from TMNT yeah. and Mutant Mayhem. Thrawn from Ahsoka. No. The Scream guy from Scream 6. It just says Scream. It does say Scream. So Ghost scream. Face. No, Scream. Scream. <laughs> Mr. Scream. Well, for me, it's a toss-up between awful Godzilla, yeah. just an awful time, and um, the High Evolutionary. Yeah. Awful and sinister in different ways. That's very true. What I loved about the High Evolutionary is that, like, he's a guy actively doing bad and being like, I'm doing this for the good of the universe, but he obviously isn't, and then they beat him up. Yeah, that's true. And that's, that's what I love. That is satisfying. You're and just, absolutely right. And Godzilla, it was seeing something that mean. He was so mean. He was really mean. Why was he that mean? He's really mean, but I feel he's also an animal. Yes, So maybe okay. that takes him out of contention for me. Right. Jason Momoa's Dante, he's having a delightful time. Yeah. And I like that he overshadowed everybody else in the movie. They didn't like that. They One didn't. person in particular didn't like but it. But that's the thing because they were they've all been resting on their laurels. Yeah, that's and right. And a new guy came in and he and he got in there and he had a big silky pants. He did, didn't I he? I think that's important. Yeah. Um Hugh Grant's Forge was good. Yeah, yeah. But I couldn't name him. No, neither could I. Yeah. Gabriel in the entity. Yeah. I love Gabriel's autumnal wardrobe, as I've mentioned oh, previously. Like, what's to, autumnal, mate? Like it's sort of like it's sort of like, you know, like it's got some cranberry and some oatmeal. And but what does that mean? Like just the colors, so and the, the colors textures. of autumn, is it? Yeah, like autumn colors and textures, and just like yeah, you know, you just want to gobble it up. Yum, 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 yum. Sure, okay. Uh but I, he's, I don't, I, I think his. Status as a good villain or not, and the entity's status as a villain will depend on the next movie. Oh, okay. I well, think. let's hold that thought. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go with – and Cocaine Bear, that's a bit of fun. But, again, just yeah, an animal. Fine. I'm going to go with Jason Momoa's Dante. Oh, I'm going to go with – Because Ooh. movie upset and also real-life upset. I'm going to go with The High Evolutionary because it wasn't like, I'm going to shoot uh, the world with a laser. Yep, that's Though true. Though he did do that at one point, I yep. think. Uh-huh. Uh, he did blow up a planet. Yeah. Uh, but I thought just a terrific and really compelling villain, really sinister. And when he got his comeuppance, you were like – 
Feels good. Yeah. Apparently Guardians 3 is not getting any nominations for like hair and makeup. What? Which is astounding. There's a bunch of dog people That's in right. that. That's right. They made like thousands of dog people. <laughs> and, and the high evolutionary yeah. like, look alone. Incredible. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. They painted that dude gold. That's a good movie. What's yeah. happening? Yeah, yeah, it is good. Uh, the, the winner, mm-hmm. uh-oh, I've jumped around here, is the high evolutionary with 23%. Not bad. Followed by the spot. Again, I'm saying that because I don't think it's the spot's movie. Mm. Like he triggers an event. Yeah, right. But, there's, but then he disappears. He disappears, most of it. and then you see, like, you know, you've got like Spider Man 2099 and all yeah. these other things which are the driving villa- it The forward. villainy is about. Ex- it's the it's the tyranny of expectations, James. That's right. What you and and the, and the system and like what you this is what you're expected to do, so you better do it. And that's the making how they made the bloody movie. Am I right? Oh, oh, oh yes. That's I've done it again. Uh, the patri- crunch. The villain is crunch. That's right. The patriarchy, fifteen point two percent, followed by Godzilla minus one with fourteen percent, and Dante and Oppenheimer came in. At, <clears throat> excuse me, at four point four percent. Well, they've both got the big slacks, don't they? Got they? Big slacks, mate. And you God. got it. <laughs> <laughs> big, just, big, heavy bottomed boys. Oh my, just good slacks. Yeah, that'll get you. That'll get you in the top five. I tell you what, mate. That'll get. That'll that'll break down doors for you. Yeah. Here's a here's a here's a here's a uh, new one. Yeah. Award. It's not best, new. It's not no, new. We did it last new. year. It's new for this for this to this episode. Yeah. Uh the best cameo of the year. Uh la- according to Collings, last year famous root rat Daredevil <laughs> won the award for his short appearances in the She Hulk series. I remember and that. Fair enough. But this year Speaking of short was- appearances, Bradley Cooper Dungeons and Dragons, oh, am I right? Oh, oh, oh. He's in there. Antonio Banderas, Dial of Destiny. Is that a cameo? Or is that just a guy who's in a movie for 20 minutes? He's in quite a lot of it, but I'll I'll take it. All right. Uh our friends Auntie Donna in the Dungeons and Dragons movie. The Australian release. Just the Australian release. Love well, it. Well, probably Asia Pacific. I, I don't know. No, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, Kelsey Grammer in the Marvels. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really there, is he? Charles Martinet in Super Mario Brothers. So that's the original voice of sure. Mario. Mm. Uh, Donald Glover in Across the Spider Verse. That's fun. Gary Oldman in Oppenheimer. When he came in and went, Oppenheimer's a bitch. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Goldblum in Asteroid City. That's Haven't a good one. Haven't seen it. Uh, John Cena in Barbie. Forgot. YouTuber Matt Pat in Five Nights at Freddy's is YouTuber, right? That's true, yeah. Oh, or The Rock in Fast X. Well, that was a big surprise if they didn't reveal it beforehand. That's true, probably. and that's a and that's a that's a that's a movie upset and also a real life upset. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a man crawling back. Yeah, yeah. Crawling home. Okay, now let's 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 churn through these. Antonio Banderas, I think you're right. No. I think that's a I think that's not a – he's not waving from a ship for a moment. No. He's in there. It's for, not like Dan Aykroyd in uh, Temple of Doom. That's true. Where he's like, "Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Aykroyd." Yeah, yeah. I mean, he gets about he gets he gets more screen time than say Jonathan Rhys Davies, sure. who's also in that movie. Yeah, uh, like Brad Bradley Cooper. That's fine. oh, you're just skipping over Auntie. Donna, oh yeah, okay, you? right. Um, Not yeah. wide enough release is what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, look, I loved it. Yeah, and I love the story behind it. Oh my god! If you haven't, if check you haven't out that heard, episode. Uh, if you haven't heard that, uh, their their story of going being sent to LA and, uh, <laughs> for no reason, for no reason. Um, <laughs> but they're also again, had I not known. Never would have picked it because no, they're no, doing no. incredible vo- voice acting. Well, they're, they're and a, the problem, of course, is that they animated the because the they're, voices they're, before they're, they're they're playing reanimated corpses in a graveyard. Yeah, they're doing the voices, but they had to clearly they weren't like just wing it and we'll fix the mouths no. and posts. They're like you have to you have to match the you have to exactly match that. So they couldn't just do characters or whatever. Oh, they should have put them in it like right? just fully in it. Yeah, yeah, just have them standing around in the graveyard. That would have been incredible, right? Yeah. Uh, Bradley Cooper. We're not put, putting them because they should have. They should have given them more. I agree. And so we're not going to vote for that. Yeah, that's right. Dogs, yeah. not Auntie Donna. <laughs> right. Uh, Bradley Cooper. That's an upset. Just Bradley Cooper in it for some reason. Yeah, he was the maestro this year or whatever. That's true. Or the he was. Maestro, and yeah. people are saying it's good, and he put on a good fake nose or whatever happened. They are. They are it. saying that. Yep. They're saying it's a good nose. That's what they're saying. They are saying that. Uh, Kelsey Grammer's barely in it. I mean, it's a. I think three or four years ago, I, that would have been something I cared more about. Mm-hmm. But it was just. I think was it spoiled for me? I don't remember. I think I've spoiled it for myself. Mm-hmm. Charles Martinet. Uh, I mean, I don't care. I don't care for that movie. I don't movie. care, but good on him. Yeah. Good on him for getting a gig. What, Original what voice is of Mario. He, what is he in that movie? He oh. voices like the pizza shop owner or something. Oh, okay, great. That's yeah. great. Uh, Donald Glover in Across the Spider-Verse. So he's doing uh, fi- finally getting that. That was that fun. I, I yeah. liked that one. Yep. Uh, Gary Oldman and Oppenheimer. Good. Not as good, I think, as uh, the upsetting appearance of um, the nuclear Casey explosion. Affleck. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like, were Casey Affleck not in there to just storm that scene and just be upsetting and for people to go, ah. Yeah. Upset in the movie, upset in real life. True. Yeah. 
Two big upsets. I don't just so big ups is what big you're saying. Big ups, yeah, to Casey Affleck. That's what I'm saying. Big ups to him. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, abs- abs- I haven't seen it. Good one. John Cena. He's in I it forgot. For, yeah, he's in it for a second. I That's, forgot. Uh, Matt Pat, don't care. Good on him. The Rock. Fast mm, X. I'm look. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna late. say Donald Glover. I'm gonna say Bradley Cooper. Okay. Because what? Like, I still don't know the the reason behind that. Yeah. Does he love Dungeons and Dragons? Is he friends with the directors? Is is? Do we do it? Did we do this? Did we make it happen? Did yeah. we imagine it into being? Maybe. I think the idea of putting Donald Glover in like a li- it li- as live action into an animated movie just just that's fun for me. Is that also, is true? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the uh, Donald Glover won with thirty two percent, followed by Auntie Donna fifteen percent, then Bradley Cooper at fourteen percent, then John Cena nine point four percent, and then Matt Pat. 9.1%. Love that for Matt Pat. Good on you, Matt Pat. he's got getting some recognition. Good Matt on you, Pat. Matthew Pathew, which is your that's, real name. That's right. Me and Tim have a thing in common. Yeah. We've got a bunch of uh, money stolen from Defy Media. Oh, I think you mentioned yeah. that, yeah. Me oh. and him, we're, we're simpatico in that yeah, way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got yeah. ripped off by a big company one time. Who's the, who's, could you maybe team up one day and find the guy responsible and beat him I up? I know who it was. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I could tell you. I just don't remember the top of my head. Oh, but right. yeah, no, I know who it was. Oh. Yeah. And if I ever see him, I'm going to slap him legit. That's that's the spirit. <laughs> oh, you think I'm joking, Mason? I will slap that guy. I don't guy. think you're joking. <laughs> uh, the worst cameo of the year. But it, like an embarrassing slap. I'm not even going to hit him. Just like a, a slap where like just he, enough where he's he goes, ruffled. Oh, and then, <laughs> yeah. you just walk, then you just stare at him because he won't do anything. <laughs> yeah. He's a coward and then you walk away. <laughs> worst cameo of the year, James. Here we go. Adam West in The Flash. Yeah. Christopher Reeve and Helen Slater in The Flash. Yep. Gal Gadot in The Flash. I guess. George Clooney in The Flash. That's all right. George Reeves in The Flash. Yes. Henry Cavill in quote marks yep. in The Flash. Sort of, yeah. Jason Momoa, he's in The Flash. He is, yeah. Nick Cage in The Flash. Yep. <laughs> uh, and Teddy Sears maybe in The Flash. <laughs> Uh, so that's a big, big win yep. in a way. <laughs> Swept the board for the movie The Flash. For just ghoulish performances yeah. and cameos. Which is the worst though? Um, uh, for me, it was Christopher Reeve. Yep. Uh-huh. But I think for you, it was probably George Reeves, right? Probably George Reeves. I mean, Nick uh, Teddy Sears. At least Nick Cage is alive. Well, that's the thing. So t- Teddy Sears. <laughs> and he agreed to do Teddy it. Teddy Sears, is it even him? We don't know. Or, we don't know who that was. Because at the time they were like, no, it's just nobody of any importance. Yeah. I'm like, ouch. All right. Uh, look, Jason Momoa, Henry Cavill, they can they can go. Clooney, good for him for, for being a good sport about that yeah. and probably being paid a lot, an astounding amount of money to get out of a car <laughs> and just not do anything. Just be in his regular regular clothes, yep. regular, didn't shave his beard, didn't do anything, yep. looked annoyed, yep, he like did, barely did. acting. I love that. Yep. That's good. George Reeves, yes, absolutely. Nick Cage, you're right. It's a good story where they were just yeah. it was just like, yeah, they brought me in and I stood around for a bit. And they put like they made a suit for him yeah, and everything. Yeah. But then he's like, but then what went on sta- on, on screen I didn't is nothing. Do that. I didn't do anything. So that's <laughs> fascinating. But out of sheer disrespect, I think George Reeves. And I'll say a, a man who, who was typecast in that role and it led to his death. And they're just like, He may have in. killed himself or he was murdered. Yep. We don't really know. And Christopher Reeve. Similarly, and not only that, like the Christopher Reeve thing, and I'm sure his estate approved. George Reeves might not have an estate because like, he didn't yeah. have family. Yeah, but the Christopher Reeve thing, I, just the way that, like, why did you make it look like this? Yeah, that was what really upset yeah. me. Yeah, and the fact that they're not even doing not, anything. that's nothing. They're just standing there. Yeah, I think they'd be like, let's go and help. But of course, they didn't have the time to make Superman and Supergirl yeah. help. So they're looks just like they did it in two weeks. Yeah, which absolutely. they probably did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so George it looks like they just got an like an iPhone app where you take a photo, and then you just oh, and you bring a, it to life. You, you put, yeah, and you bring it to life. It yeah. looked like that. Uh, George Reeves, thirty five percent, is the winner. Big winner, even in death. Yeah. Uh, Chris Reeve and Helen Slater. Helen Slater's still alive, so that's good. I hope she got money for that. Yes, yeah, that's thirty percent. It's probably George Reeves actually, isn't it? Nick Cage, thirteen percent. Henry Cavill, five percent. George Clooney, three point five percent. I don't even really. Oh, it's the back of him or something. Yeah, and we see him. We see him shirtless in one of those merry-go-round scenes. Oh, Multiverse yeah, that was what it was. And he's oh, all plasticky. We see him because he couldn't get into the Shazam. I'm thinking of his cameo in Shazam. You see the back of him in Shazam because the city's walled off or something? Do you? Is that true? I don't know. Is that true? Mason? I don't know, man. Hang on. I don't know, man. And Gal Gadot is, a, I mean, she also cameos in Shazam, doesn't she? She yes. shows up at the end and she's like, and it goes, and she's like, I can, bring, I can bring this guy back to life, but I won't bring anybody else back to life because I can't or because I won't. I won't. Dunno. I don't know if that thing I just said is true. I can't tell, honestly. Does it matter? No. Never think about it again. I've never thought about it. That's my gift to you, James, my New Year's gift. Never think about that ever again (laughs) for as long as you live. 
until we do the Shazam Fury of the Gods commentary, at which point you will think of nothing else. You'll spend the entire commentary, I'll tell you this much, <laughs> guaranteed, you'll spend the entire commentary thinking about it and then a, a frame will happen and you'll go, is that the thing I remember? Don't know. <laughs> Is an award, James. What? What's the, the weirdest, weirdest thing, thing that, that happened? happened? So okay. This is a new award. It is. Okay, so here we go. Barbenheimer's combined success. Mm-hmm. G.I. Joe in Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Oh, yeah. Harry Potter reboot series announced. Yeah, that's dumb. Intentionally bad CGI in The Flash. Yeah. The Rock returns to Fast and Furious family. God, these are so many upsets. I know. The Rock signs on for Safdie Brothers movie. Okay. The Madam Web trailer. Yeah, that was fun. Russell Crowe's Little Scarf in Craven <laughs> trailer. Yep. Uh, or the secret invasion finale fight. God. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a weird, this is a weird year for weird things. I happening. mean, Barbenheimer's combined success, that's I love that. It that's, is a phenomenal. I mean, I guess of a lot of the ones on here as well, that's a positive one. Yeah. Like a lot of these other ones are just like, ugh. Yeah, G.I. Joe, that's feels pretty desperate again, yeah. especially. But it is also it is undeniably weird that they're like Guess what? We're GI Joe, and you know because I have this little card that says yeah. GI Joe. I don't have anything else to prove. What it. if Snake Eyes was behind the room? Show the Snake Eyes there, and you don't have to even cast him. It's yeah, just yeah. A, I and mean, he's he doing, has been cast. And he's but... doing something like not particularly Snake Eyes, and he has to get into Snake Eyes mode. <laughs> Goes into a ninja crouch. Yeah, or something. exactly right. Yeah, he's um, <laughs> he's doing kung fu action. Well, he good. begins to do kung fu action. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, but he's just bloody. He's bloody. He's just. He's got the mask up, and he's having a smoke. <laughs> And he's like, what? And he throws it. He throws the cigarette. And he puts the mask down. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Always ready for action. You can't say yeah. No, that's true. He can't. Yeah, yeah. unless it's the uh, Henry Golding one, which that's can't true, say yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you reckon, James? Uh, would you, did, uh, Harry? You know what? The Harry Potter thing is a weird thing to announce, but not surprising considering all of the cast hate J.K. Yeah, Rowling. I kind of feel like we have to eliminate here anything here that is that is just. We need to keep this train rolling. Oh, you know okay. What I so mean? would you say that for the Rock, Fast and Furious? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Now you love a little scarf. Does that mean anything to you? It means nothing to me. Okay. The and Madam- it seemed, these days, also, it seems like a thing Russell Crowe would do. That's true. There's nothing that he was man Greek in that movie. Yeah, he was absolutely Greek. Uh, he, he was Franco Cozzo Greek. He in that certainly movie. was. So the yeah. Secret Invasion final fight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that was. It did come out of nowhere. It did, didn't and it? it was bad and weird, and I didn't like it. But I think I'm going to go with the Barbenheimer combined success. I think I am also. Yes, just a thing that happened, and it was kind of like good for them figuring yeah. something out. By what happened organically in a way, as yep. far as we know, that's true. Everybody was on board with it. Yep, it's good. So the winner is intentionally bad CGI in the Flash. Okay, uh, yeah, that is because because they were like, no, it's supposed to look like this, and it's like, well, then if that's true, which it isn't, you've, that's bad. Yeah, what you've done. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Madam Web trailer for twenty percent, Secret Invasion fight seventeen percent, GI Joe Rise of the Beast ten percent, Harry Potter eight percent. Now, listeners also mentioned. See, these are some bonuses that people put in. Yep. Seeing Modok's bottom in Quantum Mania. Oh yep. One Piece live action being actually good. Oh yeah. Moana live action remake announced. Specifically, the CGI baby and microwave scene in the Flash. Uh-huh. Oh, the Dick Tracy special. Dick Tracy zooms in. It's that one. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it, that is the. All right, yeah, okay. What's what's the weirdest thing that happened? Look, Barbenheim is combined success. They were, look. I'm gonna let's turn. I'm gonna turn my back on it yep. because they're both very good movies. Yeah, sure. They're good movies and enjoyable. That's not and, enough. No, and and people realize, or maybe maybe these the directors realize what you want is you want a good movie that's got something to say. Yeah, and there it is. So you're right. It's the Dick Tracy special that. Warren Beatty has to keep making every few years, so to keep the rights, to retain the rights to Dick Tracy, a, a property no one wants. Yeah, watch the. Um, we did a video on it for Caravan of Garbage where we go through it. Um, did we? Yeah, we did Caravan of Garbage this year on Dick Tracy. Oh, the movie. Up, it's, oh, okay, that's. And great. we also talked about it when it happened. Oh, terrific! I love yeah, that. Yeah. That's great. Ooh, biggest disappointment of the Uh-oh, year. Oh, wouldn't want to be any of these guys. Book of Boba Fett ran away with it last year. Previous winners include Batman v Superman, Kingsman Two, and the Game of Thrones season finale. Wow, okay, here we go. The CGI flash cameos. Ugh, yeah. I mean, were we expecting anything? No, good? I'm not surprised. See, that's surprised. the thing, and I think maybe as we go through these nominations, we're gonna have to eliminate anybody where we're like We knew we we didn't think this was gonna be good. Yeah. Uh Disney Plus removing shows. Not surprising. El Muerto was cancelled. That's crazy to me. That is crazy, that. actually. They cancelled yeah. that thing. That could that would have been huge. It would have been huge. Mm. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Look, Mason, it was my most anticipated movie of the year, and you kept dogging on me, telling me that don't get my hopes up. And maybe, I can't remember, so I guess maybe I did. you were right. Yeah. Maybe maybe it wasn't great. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh. But uh, also, in my heart of hearts, what, what was it going to be to me? Really? That's true. <laughs> uh, also, I think like if we go through all of these and we go, none of these were really disappointing. We knew they were all going to be bad. That's pretty bad for us, isn't it? Uh, 
the MCU's direction in general. Yeah. No Grant Gustin in the Flash. So, uh, so that's, I mean, that's, that's TV's that, TV's the Flash. That's like that's bad for him. That like, why wouldn't you? He's done he's done so much legwork, literally. Oh, Mason. oh yes, indeed. Like you don't want to give him a little cameo. Like he's been marketing this character for yeah, yeah. nine years and doing a good job. Yeah. And you don't, but that's more on him. I don't care. Do you think at his peak, Grant Gustin would have incredible runner's legs? Mm-hmm. Because, but a withered upper body. Well, no, not even that. Probably, but um. Do you think he's got incredible runner's legs or due to the weird way you have to run for, like, green screen flash running, they've developed really oddly? Oh, you know? so he runs like a horse with a broken foot. Maybe. <laughs> so it's just, like, odd muscles, like you don't even know you have them, and it's like, why yeah. are those bulging out? Maybe he's got, like, his legs are dog-legged. They're, like, bending maybe they're backwards. Maybe they're bending backwards, maybe. I don't know. I feel like he runs normally. But that's what I'm saying. He looks like he, but that's but it's, but that's it's green screen magic. It's not actually They don't actually get him to run around the city. They Good just point. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Secret Invasion series in its entirety, Star Wars TV shows in their entirety. Oh yeah, the Suicide Squad game reveal. Yeah, what? Well, the reveal that it, what it was was disappointing. Was sort of live. But it's not out and, yet. So uh, Warner Brothers scrapping movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pennyworth: The Origins of Batman's Butler cancelled. Oh, Devo. Yeah, that is Devo, isn't it? Apparently, we'll, never know, right. we'll never know the real origin of Blue Tank Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. He inhales a poison. He did, or did the thing. Yeah. But it's not the Venom thing or it's a different thing? I it's don't know. It's a different know. thing, I think, yeah. For me, just yep. give it, I mean, the CJ cameo is no good. Alberto, devastating, obviously. So Disney Plus removing shows, they're all doing that. But I'm going to say it's the Warner Brothers scrapping Absolutely, movies. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, because, it not again, I, it's not surprising that they're doing it. But uh-huh. just... Just dogs, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just absolute dogs. Absolute dogs. Throwing things in the bin that they didn't had no put no effort into whatsoever. They didn't create anything. Yeah. They just looked at a line sheet and went. Not that one. Not that Get rid of that. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah. Just people with no taste or no yeah. no anything. Yeah. And again. And sure, maybe they were bad. Yeah. But like, well, you released a bunch of bad stuff. Re- yeah. <laughs> The, and the idea as well that they went, uh, Brendan Fraser, he, he's going to maybe win an Oscar, but let's scrap the other movies. In. Yeah. Why would anybody Michael have Keaton it? was in it. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Anyway. Uh, Let's talk about Batgirl. Yes. Oh, here we go. Big yeah. time, James. This is a big time. Well, hang on. We've got to do the results. Oh, yeah. Warner Brothers scrapping movies won mm-hmm. with 20%, followed by Secret Invasion at 19%. Then the MCU direction in general at 13.5%. Then El Muerto cancelled 12%. Then Dial of Destiny, 7%. Mm-hmm. Listeners also mentioned Dune 2 delay. Ant Man three specifically, huh. everything Warner Brothers. No D in Magic Mike three. I didn't know that. Mm. If I'd have known that, that's a different story. That's right. Uh, no Snake Eyes review. It's coming. Yeah. That first episode of the uh, next, when we're yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's next, Mason? James, these are big ones. Oh my god, I love it. It's, it's my favorite award. A Weekly Planet exclusive award, as far as we know. I'm looking at this. I don't even know. The winner of this the game is on award. Uh, this award is loosely described as the worst or most outrageous attempt to set up a sequel that might never happen, usually in the final scene of post-credits. That's a good – finally somebody's nailed it down and it's yeah. Rob Collins. And it's also – I would say might never happen. I would say won't ever happen. <laughs> it was named after a famous attempt at this Dracula Untold 2014. Nearly 10 years. Yeah, that's right. Last year, Morbius won in a tight contest with Black Adam. Yeah. Other previous winners include Artemis Fowl, The Matrix 4, and Tom Cruise's The Mummy. Just big time news. And again – this is all vibes. I feel there. like the Matrix 4 probably won because we just saw it. And yeah, almost certainly, this, yeah. Because I don't know if that's yeah. the only one. That, um, yeah. And again, like, the, there there are various factors involved in this. If we already know a sequel's coming, sometimes it doesn't count. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, for years, you know, something like the MCU would never win because we know, we know there's another one in production, yeah. the next thing, you know. But uh, I feel like it's different now because they'll be like Eternals, Harry Styles. Yeah, and it's like, uh, is that ever going to yeah, happen? Yeah, yeah. Blade. It, sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes it it helps if there's like a real unearned confidence. Like if the movie is absolute garbage, but then they're like, "What do you think of this in the sequel?" It's like sometimes Hitler shows up. Sometimes Hitler does show up. That's a real one that That's happened right. uh, in the King's Man. Okay, here's here's a few James. Yep. Here's the nominations. The Council of Kangs in Quantumania. What's interesting about that one I well, as well is I guess that it's real world things affecting it and also people not connecting with the character. Mm. That's twofold. That's a twofer. Mm. Uh, Dr. Savannah and Mr. Mind meet again in Shazam Fury of the Gods. I forgot that happened. Is that true? That does happen, yeah. Okay. His Dr. Savannah is still in his, his prison or what have you, and I think he's, maybe he's got a big beard. And Did Mr. they Mind's film like, that when they filmed the first movie and just put it back in this? No, I think this is new. Great. And, and, and Mr. Mind's like, oh, soon. And Savannah's like, come on. Right. You know? So that's a bit of a fun – that's a fun gag. I don't think they ever intend to, 
to get to that? No, I mean, obviously not. Well, they can't. They can't. Uh, the Flash and George Clooney's Batman. Now, I know that this is ending and that was supposed to reboot and whatever, but they weren't ever seriously going to do anything Absolutely with that, not, right? no. It was it's just no, supposed to be a joke, there's no, right? There's no way there is, like, again, Clooney said quite recently, there's not enough drugs in the world to get me to be Batman again. And he wouldn't have... He wouldn't have changed. He wouldn't have been all for it, and then changed his mind after the negative reaction to the Flash. He's always thought that. Yeah. There's no way he would do another one. There is. The, the, he might also be out of it by the time the next post credits rolls around with Aquaman. Yeah. Like he might have already fixed it again. I think probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I don't. I don't think that. We'll never know. No, but I, there's no way that that's a serious attempt to be like, "Come on, guys, keep watching these movies, and we'll get Clooney Batman back." There's yeah. no way. There's no one. Uh, GI. It's Joe like and- the Howard of the Duck ending of yeah. Guardians. It's like that's not really supposed to be. Anything. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. G.I. Joe and Transformers Rise of the Beast. See, that, I feel like they will attempt that. Yep. But what a dreadful display. Absolutely awful. Yeah. No, just nothing. Uh, Oppenheimer's JFK name drop. All for the sequel. Yeah. That's a fun, that feels like, that that does feel like Christopher Nolan, he's doing a fun little joke. Okay. Like, you know, how all the post-credits in the Marvel movies and he went, oh, what if I say JFK? He's notoriously, he's a notorious prankster. We he's know a that. prankster. He's the original <laughs> prankster, perhaps. Yeah. Um, Rebel Moon Part 1 immediately <laughs> setting up another Snyder Cut. Yeah. That's bold. That is very... I mean, that is happening. Yeah, but I mean, but yeah. also due to the the very nebulous rules of the Games Honor Award, I think that's that's it. that's a contender. Sure, let's put it in there. Um, Shazam meets Peacemaker's team in Fury of the Gods. That didn't make any sense. No. Mm. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Ted Cord in Blue Beetle post-credits. That might come back. We. I think yeah. there's a good chance we yeah. will, because he's staying. Yep. Yeah. The current Blue Beetle, and I think we could see Ted Court, but he might yeah, just yeah. be there. Yep. He might, so I uh, wouldn't rule that out. Yeah, two more. The Last Voyage of the Demeter sequel tease. Oh, when it's like Dracula's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's there. Yeah. Uh, or the entire DCEU. I think yes. it's that one okay. because it's four different movies doing yeah, it. It's true, yeah. Um, I guess technically not Aquaman 2 because it ends yep. with a man eating a bug. Yep. But if you look at the other ones, they're all doing... Get ready for this. That's true, Shazam. Yeah, I think individually there's not enough there uh-huh. to be like this is what's coming. Yep. But if you look at them attempting that four different times yep. <laughs> in a universe that he's dead, yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. But what yeah. do you think? I mean, I genuinely like the idea of Ted Cord in the post credits. Sure, I think that's fun. Um, uh, G.I. Joe is a strong contender for me again. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, maybe so, it is that one because it's just. Again, I don't doubt that they're going to try it at some yep. point, yeah, yeah, yeah. but atrocious. Yeah. Rebel Moon Part 1 immediately setting up another Snyder Cut. That Incredible. Just the idea of before it's even out, and it got a limited cinema release, but even yeah. before that, Snyder went, you yeah, know, I've got a better version. There's a real and, one with boobs. And, the, and the pre, the, this one's actually bad in, in comparison. Why would you do that? <laughs> but it is coming out. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go But with, it was also already coming out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like if you left this a year, they wouldn't be like, yeah, yeah do that version. That's true, yeah. Mm. Uh, look, it is, it's bad, and I don't want to fall to recency bias. So, yeah, it's bad, but, again, we are getting a sequel. It's done. It's ready to go. And I don't – yeah, it's, that, that one's too bad. I'm going to go with G.I. Joe and Transformers Rise of the Beast just because of the – it's just the empty warehouse. Yeah. Just the empty warehouse and a business You know card. that door slid back on the day of filming and it was just a green screen and yeah, then they yeah. went, what do we put in here? Is it Snake Eyes? What do, and then it's yeah. just like – it's just like a couple a of blocks and a plane or Nothing, whatever. I just, don't remember what was there. Yeah, yeah. I think if they had have left it at just the card, that would have been less of a disappointment yeah, yeah, because yeah. then it's the what you imagine that like yeah. what are they going to bring in? But then they Dennis opened Quaid. it and they're like, yeah, and they're like get ready and they open up to like an empty warehouse. Astounding. <laughs> just bold very bold to be like we don't the G.I. Joe name, it stands on its own so hard we don't even need to show anything. Yeah, yeah. And there'd be people who are like, I don't know what G.I. Joe is. Yeah, exactly. Okay, is that is that a Transformers thing? I don't know. I think we're also overlooking the fact that they had a stadium of 100,000 Kangs. I think we all, that needs yeah. to be factored in, right? Yeah. Mm, but at the time, even though, like, Marvel's box office is declining They were a bit, still moving forward. I think they that. were like, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to, like, it's only, it's only real world events. Yeah. I think if, if Jonathan Majors had already been fired. Yeah, okay. And they knew that, like, they everything had come out, they, he'd already been fired and they were just putting out this movie to, because they'd made it and it was too late to edit everything out. Yeah, I think then to be like, well, look what's coming up next. That would be a that would be a true game is on. Yes, 
all timer. And they pretty much killed it in Loki as well. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with GI Joe. Me too. Uh, so it's the entire DCU, 30%, mm-hmm. followed by the Council of Kangs, 29.6, mm-hmm. followed by G.I. Joe. There we go. And the Rise of Beast, 13%, followed by the Flash in, uh, and Clooney's Batman, 9%, and Oppenheimer's JFK name drop in 7%. I forgot that. Wasn't there like, I'm going to see a young senator from yeah, whatever. Was right. that the same? Probably from Boston. Adolf Hitler. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Best animated movies. That's right. Now Last what? year, James voted for TMNT, Rise of the Ninja Turtles, while well, Meso and the listeners chose Chip and Dale. Was that slim pickings that year? It must, it must have, have been. been. Rise of the Ninja Turtles. Which was one was it? Wasn't that? even out. No, that was no, that was the Netflix one. I really liked that one. It was a continuation of the Netflix animated two D oh, animated I didn't series. Yeah, I'll stand by that. Oh, here, oh, big, big, yeah, big lineup this year because uh, there's big, big money in the animated True. stuff. True. Uh, the Boy and the Heron, the new good. Miyazaki movie. I haven't movie. seen it. Uh, Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget. Never seen any of them. Yep. Uh, Elemental. Fine. Nimona. Haven't seen it. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Incredible, it's that one. Uh, Suzume. What the hell's that? I don't don't know. know. Uh, The Super Mario Brothers movie. No. Bad. Uh, TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Yeah, good. Wish or other? It's not Wish. No. Spider-Verse. And I know that I acknowledge that there are some here that I haven't seen that could be better. Sure. But I haven't seen them. Yeah, I haven't seen The Boy and the Heron yet. Or um, Suzume was another anime situation. And uh, as I understand it, The Boy and the Heron is the the Western voice acting is very good. Mm. Pattinson is some sort of horrible bird creature and he's really going for ah. it. Maybe he's the heron. Maybe he's the boy and the heron. Maybe he's the boy and the heron. But I'm going to go with TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Over Look, Spider-Verse. Over Spider-Verse, yep. What? Yeah, because it's a new thing. Feels fresh it's and new. It's absolutely not a new thing. It's not a new thing. It's the Teenage <laughs> Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I just like the I like the lineup. I like the kids doing their improv. Yep, okay. That was a bit of fun. Um, I guess it's not like Spider Verse is half a movie, and they crunched everybody. They did crunch everybody. But I'm still going to pick it. Yeah, okay. And look, and you've, I've just remembered like the kind of the Renaissance era Vulture. Like all the designs are great. Yeah. Maybe I need to do, give it a rewatch. But I like the. I just I just like those the they they let the kids do their thing, and I thought that was fun, and it felt like fresh and interesting. Yep. And, Fresh and interesting for a fresh and interesting for a property that's been around for a very, million, very, very long time. Years. Yeah, yep. so very I'm going to go with TMNT. Well, you're wrong because it's across across the Spider Verse one with 76 percent, followed by Mutant Mayhem 10 percent. I was the, sort of right. The Boy and the Heron six percent, Nimona 2.2 percent, and then Super Mario Brothers 1.6 percent. Who's picking that? Who's Our that? wonderful valued listeners, <laughs> and I'm on their side. I'm not on your side. <laughs> okay. Best, Best horror. horror, big horror, big year for horror. Yeah, it's probably a big year for horror every year, but we they don't push through the mainstream. I didn't much. see Terrifier two if that came out this year. I didn't see that either. Yeah, these nominations cover horror movies reviewed on the podcast this year, so there'd be other stuff, of course, that we, sure, didn't, we yeah, didn't get yeah, to. Yeah. Uh, last year's winners voted by us with a black phone and Nope. Yep, so that's a good stand good by that. I'm gonna rewatch Nope. Nope's good. Those are good ones. Uh, Cocaine Bear. Yep. Evil Dead Rise. Yep. Knock at the Cabin. Yep. Saw X. The delightful Michelle Brazier came mm, in for Knock right. at the Cabin. Yeah. Scream 6, yep. Five Nights at Freddy's, yep. No One Will Save You, yep. The Last Voyage of the Demeter or Dracula on a Boat, yep. uh, or Australia's Own Talk to Me. For me, it's Talk to Me or Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, right. Well, you've got to pick one. Which might have – is there crossover people who are in both of those? Uh, I don't know. I might be thinking of something else. Uh-huh. I know there's Australians in some or one of yes, those. Australians in both of them, I believe. Oh, I mean, I, I wasn't – Talk to Me I'd heard was very good. Uh-huh. And it is very good. Yep. Evil Dead Rise, I was like – Whatever, we'll yeah, see. Uh-huh. And I fucking had a blast. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought it was terrific. So, ooh, what do you think, though? Uh, look, I like Cocaine Bear. What? To me, like, we, you didn't dislike it. It was whatever. I'm just going through the list, It James. should have gone more bigger and weirder, um, and it wasn't. A, a good, good old and Ehrenreich in that as yeah, well he's as good, one of it? the last performances of... The Bear? No. Gary Sinise? No. Gary Oldman? No. Uh, he's in Goodfellas. Gary, Gary Coleman? No. Um, Goodfellas, Mr. Goodfellas. Mr. Goodfellas. Ray you. Liotta. Ray Liotta, thank yeah. you. Did you know that or were you? I was. I knew who it was but I couldn't say. Right. I, so Same. no, I guess I didn't. Evil Dead Rise was very good. Yep, and it was just in a little room mostly. That is true. And there was some real body horror stuff and that was like, that's upsetting. I don't know if I was expecting Knock at the Cabin to be good and it was good. I liked Knock at the Cabin right? a lot, yeah. Um, Go Sorks. Go Sorks. I like Sorks. Uh, I thought it was fine if I recall. Yeah, I thought it was better than a lot of the other ones. Sure, saying. okay, yeah, yeah. Scream 6. Yeah, it was good. I liked Pretty it. Pretty fine. I liked Five it. Nights at Freddy's I thought it was eh, fine. Whatever. I didn't think it was great. Yep. No One Will Save You was a delightful concept. Enjoyed I liked that. that. It was yep. good. I liked Voyage of the Demeter. I did. Uh, God, I probably a, should have done a bit better. This is a strong... And Talk To Me. Yeah, and Talk To Me. This is a strong line. I, mean, I think I will give it a Talk To Me. 
Yeah, I a, especially as a directorial debut. I liked. I don't always like this, but I liked how mean and nasty Evil Dead Rise was. Oh my god, it was yeah, so mean. Mean and nasty, and just a good, good. Just the blood. Yeah. Someone going in a wood chipper. Bruce Campbell's in it, sort of. Put a lady gets the chainsaw at the end. Yeah. I love, and I haven't even seen them all, I love the world of the Evil Dead as well yeah, and maybe all the that's, lore yeah, that yeah. I enjoy. I mean, talk to me, good good result. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm so happy that uh, that an Australian movie got out there. and Even if it's from Adelaide. Even if it's from Adelaide, God. Yeah. Wow. It felt really authentic in terms of, like, characters as well. Yeah. And, you know, teenagers and whatever. And just, like, too late at night in Australian suburbia and it's got that weird... Yeah. Empty you're vibe a, to you're it. You're at a flickering bus stop. Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah, just yeah, like, I don't good. like this. I mean, look, very good, but I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Evil Dead Rise. I'm going go to talk, go with Talk to Me. Okay. Talk to the hand. Yeah, no. uh, talk to me for 30%. Yep. Evil Dead Rise, 14%. Mm-hmm. Cocaine Bear, 9.4%. Dracula on a Boat, 9.1%. Scream yeah. 6, 8.5%. I think – I forgot that even came out this year. I think if that had come out in like October, that probably would have done mm-hmm. better. And No One Will Save You, 8, 8.4%, which Not was bad. a good little streaming situation. Oh, James, this used to be our bread and butter. Oh, my God. Not now, Mason. Not not in the drought that we're in. Is that right? Am I right? Well, maybe Superman Legacy is going to swoop in there and treat us all. The best comic book movie last year, uh, everybody, you and me and all the listeners all said it was the Batman. Yes, it was. I think that's fair. And you're saluting that? Yep. Uh, but he, this year, could it be Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania? Technically, it could be Technically, anything. Could it's be on anything. the list. Could I mean, be. If, the, if those pranksters earlier who, who <laughs> tricked one of our awards, if they get in on this and make it Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, it could be. But otherwise, it could not be. Yep. Uh, Aquaman 2, The Lost Kingdom. Yep. Blue Beetle. Yep. The Flash. No. Nope. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yep. Yes. Uh, the Marvels. Yep. Shazam Fury of the Gods. Yep. Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Yep. TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Yep. Look. I know what I'm going to pick. Is it Spider-Man? Yeah, uh, no. It's Guardians. It's Guardians. It's Guardians for me also. It's Guardians because uh, I think I felt more in Guardians than I did Spider-Verse. Uh-huh, sure, sure. It's also the end of something and it capped mm. off really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The characters were really strong. And the songs made you feel things. Song, they tricked you with the, the songs. The songs were, I didn't love the songs. They that tricked was, you with the songs. And you were tri- like, oh, I'm doing a big cry because you're so good <laughs> No, that's not what I'm what so happened. easily tricked. <laughs> I am easily tricked, but we talked about it. I thought the soundtrack was like the weakest of the yeah, soundtracks right, they've right, done. Right. But uh-huh. I'd had that song that goes, and that's a great song. It's undeniably uh, a great space song. Space Hog. But, uh, yeah, and it was easily the best Marvel movie of the year. Spider-Verse is great, but, again, half a movie yeah. and they crunched everybody. Um, and, yeah, and then it would be TMNT and then whatever else yeah. below that. But, mm-hmm. no, Guardians 3, I really I really loved it. Um, right. And I thought it would be sadder than what it, what, what it was, and it wasn't. It was kind of bittersweet that it yeah. ended, but he didn't kill everybody or, like, or anything yeah. like that. And everybody got a nice ending. We and, were all expecting... You know, Rocket was going to die, yeah. Drax was going to die, or, you know. Yeah. And, again, they beat that guy up at the end. They beat him <laughs> up so bad and he deserved it. Yeah. And they all got a kick in. There's the moment as well where he's monologuing at Peter Quill and he's just like, I can't with this. Like, yep. e- every day it's one of you guys and uh-huh. I'm just – and then he just, they just start killing everybody in the room. Yeah, nice. It's great. It's mm. a really good movie. Satisfying. Yeah. Uh, Across the Spider-Verse, though, won at 57%. What? I guess people don't mind getting to crunch, do they? They don't mind that, I That's guess. Right. I guess they love that. <laughs> Because I shake the hands of the men who made them do a big crunch. Guardians. Please more in the future. Thank you. Guardians 336, Mutant Mayhem 4%, The Marvels 1.3%, The Flash and Blue Beetle at 0.5%. Who's voting for The Flash on these? The people, <laughs> our wonderful listeners who have opinions and they're valid opinions. They do. They're not award-winging opinions, certainly. No. Best video game adaptation thing. Last year I gave it to Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I stand by that. Don't know what that is. And James and listeners voted for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah. Now, how Probably. do we feel about this? Castlevania Nocturne. People love that animated Castlevania, so it's probably up there. I've only watched the first season, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yep, okay. Gran Turismo, sort of. Oh, yeah. It's a true story about yeah, that kid who was good right. at video games and he became I saw a... it in D-Box. Oh, did you really? Yeah, man. Wow. Uh, the Last of Us. Yeah, it's that. The Super Mario Brothers movie? Obviously not. Or Twisted Metal? No, I haven't seen it, and no. Twisted Metal is fun. I've heard it's fun, but it's not better than The Last of Us. No, it's not. No, yeah. Absolutely not. Uh, yeah, I mean, just for the the scene, just for the episode with bloody... Um, Ron um, Swanson. Swanson. Yeah, yeah, who has a real name. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that episode alone... Well, it's his fault that he doesn't have... We don't know his real name. I feel like they did rush that ending. O- Offerman, Nick Offerman. Nick Off- Ron Offerman. And it had the guy from The White Lotus, the yeah. Australian guy or whatever. Uh, who also has a name. 
but yeah, each episode was really, and I think the stuff that, that compelling or whatever, and each each episode, everything that they changed mm-hmm. was for the better yeah. and worked for the show. Like they changed the spores to like you had to get bitten, and the way that the, all the zombies communicated yeah. with each other, it was terrifying. Well, they had to change the spores so people didn't have to wear masks all the time, right? Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, performances were great. Yep. Like the two leads were really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it took everything that was good about the game and made it better. Uh, f- again, for the series. And I think I don't know this, but not I think everybody that, loved it, of course, because it made too many changes. No, I don't even think it made that many changes. But not only that, I think no, that's what they thought. I, yeah, sure. But I feel like with season two, I didn't love that second game because they took the story and they dragged it out over forty hours. However, yeah, right. and the first game is like thirteen hours or whatever. Yeah, right. And I so I feel like they could easily fix that i like the story uh-huh. and i like the characters but i didn't like the length in which it told yeah, right, it so uh-huh. i'm hoping that will be rectified in yeah season two but anyway i think they're going to do two and three i think yeah. they're going to split that second season up but i will say i think the cast in twisted metal is very good yeah think, and also they're... wasn't it supposed to be bad and then it wasn't yeah it was fun and everybody's talking about it nobody's talking about it everybody's talking about it nobody's talking about it i mean i will say you know to me it was just regular metal Sure, okay. I can't account of how twisted I am. Would you want, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, you can't. You can't it's, not, it's not their fault, though, is it? Yeah, Most it is, of, isn't it? Yeah. 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 To last me, it's just of us, normal, untwisted metal. Yeah, The Last of Us won at 72%, followed by the Super Mario Brothers, 13%, then Castlevania, 5%, Five Nights at Freddy's, 4%, Gran Turismo, 3%. Wow, no percent for twisted metal. There well, you go. Oh, got ya. Because nobody watched it. Nobody watched it. Um, best video but game. I, yep. Uh, best video game nominated by listeners. Now, let me tell you this. I didn't play any of these. I've played two and ten minutes of these okay, games. Okay, last year's listener vote went to God of War Ragnarok, but here are the nominees. Okay. Alan Wake 2. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my winner based on vibes. Okay. Alan Wake two, Baldur's Gate three. People love those. Marvel Spider Man two. Yep. Uh, Resident Evil four remake. Mm-hmm. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yep. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Yep. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So you would have played Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yeah, loved Mario it. Brothers thought Wonder. it was really really good. Uh, Super Mario Wonder. I got for my son for Christmas and I haven't played it yet, so I uh, cannot talk yeah, about right, it. Right, I will right. not talk. And Spider Man two, I played for ten minutes and I'm like, yeah, I get it. And Resident Evil 4 Remake, I completed, and it's it's good. I liked it. Right, love it. But that. it's Jedi Survivor for me. Okay. I thought it took everything that was good about the first game and yeah, yeah, made yeah, it yeah. better and more interesting. Uh, look, based on vibes alone, for me it's between Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. People Again, love two, them. Two games I haven't played. And I like, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 is... Um, it's blowing minds. It's expansive and it's and apparently a lot. Like, you know, all the, all the character choices really reverberate throughout the whole game yep. and that's really interesting and... Etc. But I'm going to go with Alan Wake 2 just because it seems really weird. Oh, yeah. is it the people who did um, Alan Wake 1? And that other one. Control. We, control, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sam Lake's in it. And Sam he's all, Lake. I'm doing a dance. Who's Sam Lake? He's the face of um, Max Payne. Oh, he's the orig- wait, the face of Max Payne. Yeah, so Sam Sam Lake is that. Oh, he's like the original creator. He's, he's or the creative director of Remedy, which is the Finnish company that makes these yeah. games. And he. He was part of the original Max Payne team, so he's the face. Oh, he looks just he does like that, him. He yeah. does that, ooh, like that face, that that pained Max Payne face. Yeah. But he's in he's in this as multiple characters. Cool. And he's, I find him delightful. Okay, I think he's a delightful man. Well, I I, I didn't know that. Mm. Um, again, Jedi Survivor because it was good. And I like Control, so there you go. Yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Spider Man Two one. Oh, also, every remedy does that thing where every like title page goes boom. Ooh, and I love that. You like that? Doom. Spider-Man 2, 31%. Baldur's yep. Gate 3, 23%. Zelda, 17%. Ooh. Jedi Survivor, 12%. Alan Wake, 5%. There you go. Anyway, we didn't play all the games this year, so. Again, I didn't play any. No idea. Yep. Yeah. Uh, best streaming service this year. Meh. Um, Colling's note is, which one was the best value this year, I guess? Last year, Disney Plus won with 49% of the vote. I would say not this year. No. Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, Paramount Plus, Peacock, Stan, Other. Including there, you could include Mubi and also Tubi. Or Shudder. Or YouTube. Yes. You spent a lot of time on YouTube this year. I love YouTube. It's good. I would say the thing I watched the most this year was definitely YouTube. Yeah, it was absolutely YouTube, yeah. But if I had to pick from here, I would say Apple because most of the shows they make are good and it's not filled with absolute dreck. Yeah, see, that's again, that's the one... There's actually a I, I should God I got to get Apple TV. I'll get it this week and I'll report back because there's a show on there that has apparently been going for a couple of years. Slow horses. Slow horses. Yeah. How did you know I was going to say that? Because the horses are so slow and that's why it's taken so that's long. That's interesting. It's got Gary Oldman. It's got Gary Oldman and he's sort of the head of an MI5 section mm. that is full of losers. Like they've all been. De- have you watched this? No, I haven't. Okay, but it's. How did you know? But that I was going to say it though. Because it's the one that people like at the moment. Oh, is it? Okay, and I, I know you better than I know anybody. Mason, That's true. And I don't like it. Yeah, I know it's bad. <laughs> yeah. 
Like it's and they're they're all like people who've been in some incident or they messed up badly, but they can't fire them. So it's just like yeah, they've, they've corralled them all in this thing. So you know, in in the expectation they'll all quit out of boredom or frustration or whatever. But then they still got to they're doing their missions. They've got to do their missions. So that looks cool. I mean, if you look at like um what Apple have done, like Monarch is running at the moment, which yep. I think I like the flashbacks more than the present day uh-huh. stuff. What's that space one is called is really good. Space. Space dudes. Space dudes, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> space dudes, space dudes, but it's artful. Yeah, that's right. Um, there was a Michael J. Fox documentary that oh. was here, uh, that was up out this year that was really Michael good. Michael J. Fox documentary. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, what else did they have? There was Yellow Jackets. Is that on there? Yeah, okay. Oh, no, uh, there's stuff that you can just rent on there. Yeah, I yeah. Guess, as well, yeah. Uh, was um, But bearing in mind, Netflix produced uh, Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child on Fire. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens with Part 2, if it can maintain the quality. Of, of a bad movie. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, otherwise, uh, very good. But people should check out Tubi. I liked Bad the, Sisters. The free streaming, streaming service yeah. that is ad supported. Did Mythic Quest come back this year? I can't remember. But it's just, yeah, it's just good, man. Mm. Just good. I, and every time I I go on there, I'm like, oh, good. There's a good thing on here to yep. watch. Um, but look, given that I don't have Apple TV, I'm going to go with YouTube. Fair enough. And gone. it is YouTube. I'm yeah. also going to go with okay, YouTube. All right, all right. Uh, so Disney Plus, 18.3%. Amazon Prime, 18%. Apple TV, 17%. HBO Max, 14%. We don't have that here. Netflix, 12%. We have Bonge. We have Bonge. We have Australia's Bonge. Bonge. Uh, favorite Caravan of Garbage episode. Ooh. Ooh okay. Here Last we go. year, the listeners voted for Batman Begins, Wink, the, actually the Twilight Saga. Yeah. We got him as a favorite series of episodes. But this time around... Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, oh. Indiana Jones, oh. The Monsterverse, mm-hmm. Hunger Games, oh, yeah. the Dick Tracy Rocketeer Phantom Green Hornet Universe. You know it when you see you it. You sure do. Series. Robocops, yep. Michael Bay's TMNT movies, oh, yeah. Masters of the Universe. Uh-huh. Did we cover that? Oh, we did, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, love, love that for us. Mm. Mission Impossible series. Fast and Furious 4 to 7. Yep. Transformers the movie. Mm-hmm. The Flash Supergirl Batman Returns. You know it when you see it. Yep. Uh, Batman Forever. No, that was the tie into The Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Yep. The Star Wars Rebels finale. Oh, yeah. Pixels, The Wizard and Super Mario Brothers. Dungeons and Dragons. The Shrek movies or Zack Snyder's Justice League. For me, yes. it's the Mission Impossible series. Yeah, Because right, they're right. always fun to revisit. Yeah, it's But true. also they're good. They are good. It's so true, actually. Maybe in terms of like varying quality. Yep. You know, I didn't mind going to the Hunger Games series again. I was like, uh-huh. this is interesting. Uh, I feel like I flagged in the middle of those. Okay, I'm yeah. Just like, no, oh, this well, but those movies flagged in the middle of yeah, those. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Fast and Furious 4 to 7 was – the Shrek movies were fun. Shrek movies were fun. I'm going to go with Fast and Furious 4 to 7. All right. I'm, I had a fun revisit of those, okay. I think. You know what? I'm going to go with the Dick Tracy Rocketeer, the Phantom Green yeah. Hornet. Because they were a – Of wildly varying. What a quality. weird bunch. Yeah, right. Oh, and that one, 22%, followed nice. by the Shrek movie, 16%, then Mission Impossible, 98 then Indiana Jones, 96 then The Hunger Games, 73 and then The Monsterverse, 7 Oh, Indiana Jones. You know what? Indiana Jones. That was fun to revisit um, those. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Do those votes reflect the number of people who actually watch those videos? Probably, actually. You think so? Let me think. Did a lot of people watch those Dick oh, Tracy Nick ones? Tracy, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Let me check, actually. Uh, how did Shrek do? Shrek would have done well. The original like Shrek, Shrek is about 430,000. And the next one's about 400,000. It's diminishing returns. Shrek 3 is 343,000. And then Shrek 4 is 316,000. Wow. So, yeah, that's Get on it, Shrek heads. Yeah. Get in there, pump those numbers up. Yeah, who knows what's going on yeah, with Shrek? Yeah, that's you know? right. Anyway, Shrek's coming back yeah. or something. What's well, next? Best series ever, nominated by the listeners. Ooh. These top contenders have been chosen by listeners from a longer list. Last year's winner was Andor. Andor! Here we go. Ahsoka. Gen V, the boy spinoff. Uh-huh. Barry season four. I haven't seen it. The Bear season two. Oh, Bear. The Fall of the House of Usher. Yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Last of Us. Yep. Loki season two. Yep. Poker Face. Fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, Scott Pilgrim <laughs> Takes Off. I haven't seen it yet. Star Trek Strange New World season two. I did watch that. Succession season four. Yep. Ted Lasso season three. Good TV. Good TV. What a good year. TV. For me, it's between The Bear season two. Yep. And probably Poker Face. For me, it's between that and also The Last of Us. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, because, um, like, I liked Gen V, but I didn't love it. Ahsoka mm-hmm. was whatever. Yeah. How's the show I quite like? The Bear Season 2, every episode great, Poker Face new. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, The Bear Season 2 has the episode where where Cousin goes to work at the fancy restaurant and he, and he learns the value of, like, the yep. – 
beautiful service to people and making them happy. And There's the one with Will Poulter for some reason. That's right, where the, where where one of the chefs goes to to mm. Europe and yeah. they have fun, have a fun time. Olivia Coleman's in an episode. That's true. Uh, that's the that's fancy one. There's the horrific Thanksgiving episode. Yes, the upsetting one. They get um, that bear out of the kitchen finally, for a time, but it gets but back it gets in. Gets back in the kitchen. <laughs> Cousin, what are you doing? You let him back in the kitchen. He looked hungry, cousin. You know? Yeah. But uh, Poker Face was delightful, though. It I was think. really. I really enjoyed yeah. Poker Face. Mm. And you know what? I am going to say, I loved it. Yeah. I thought, and I, look, I loved it's Last good. of Us, but it was harrowing. It yeah. was a harrowing time. And, like, to some degree, Poker Face was also, like, there were murders every. There was yeah. a murder every. And it was usually a person you're like, oh, I like this person. Yeah. And then Columbo style knocked off. Yeah. Or, yeah, I like this person. Oh, they're a bad person. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. But, like, great ensemble, just great guest stars every time. Yeah. Benjamin Bratt was in there. Just oh, yeah. Horrible, horrible Adrian guy. Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody was in there. Yeah, I mean, and the lead as well. She's yes. amazing. Natasha Lyon. That's Le- Leon. Leon. Saying that. Yeah, she- great. I just loved her. Just a freewheeling spirit yeah. driving across America. I mean, she's on the run. And I think she did that other show this year again. The um, Reverse Time Netflix. Reverse Time whatever. Netflix. I'm in a, somebody else's body back in time. I'm in my mum's body or whatever. Don't know. Didn't watch Russian it. Doll. Like the first season. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but The Last of Us won with 20%, followed uh-huh. by The Bear, 14%, followed by Loki, 12.1%, followed by Succession. Succession was really good, 12%, and Scott Pilgrim, 8%. There you go. Got to watch Scott Pilgrim. Mm. Got to watch that Scott Pilgrim, Mason. Ooh, worst series ever nominated by listeners. Ooh. There's going to be a few things that I haven't seen in here, definitely. Sure. This is also a new award somehow. Mm. Uh, oh. Ahsoka. And just like that, season two. It's whatever, yeah. Black Mirror season six. Uh-huh. The Continental, the John Wick spin-off from it. the 70s. The Frasier reboot. Probably. The Mandalorian Season 3. Pretty dire. Rick and Morty Season 7. That's some good episodes. I've heard that. Secret Invasion. Yeah, bad. The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon. Don't know. And The Witcher Season 3. I also don't know, but people didn't like Ooh. it. It's Secret Invasion. Yeah, I like, I like, look, I liked The Continental. I liked Black Mirror Season 6. I thought there was some, like, like every season, there's some strong episodes and some bad episodes. Yes. Ahsoka was bad and boring. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Which was what uh, Marvel and Disney have told me to say about yeah. it. They paid us. They, they paid sent us the check, say... and they said, "Bad and boring. I'd rather be watching anything else." <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I heard. I heard there was some good Rick and Morty episodes. I didn't say it. There though. are. There. Are, I mean, there's more than a few in there. That's. Yeah. It's pretty solid. Yeah. God. There's the whole episode was was really good, and you get to see Rick Prime. Like, there's a showdown yeah, right. episode, and look, Ahsoka. I didn't. There's like an it. atrocious one where they they fight a bunch of numbers and stuff, and. It's like a, like physically numbered. Yeah, remember Ice T was in and he comes back and it's like the oh, right. numerators versus the letters. Oh and yeah, it's just, okay, right. It's bad. And they're like, "Isn't this dumb?" And it's like, and it's yeah, and it's not good. Also, <laughs> it's, it's a, a bad episode. Ahsoka was about the level that I thought it would be. So that doesn't <laughs> okay. Okay, so I think it's got to be Secret Invasion. Yeah, because what a letdown. We weren't even going to talk about it no. until it was boring, and then it was really bad. Yeah, it was so boring, nothing, and then just dropped into bad. Just yeah. The, the potential, like, when the Marvel Universe first kicked off, if you were like, Imagine. there's going to be a secret invasion, it's going to yeah. be espionage, Nick Fury gets the spotlight, that's going to be incredible. What's, what, what are they going to pull out, of the, pull out of the bag here for this? The answer's nothing. A bunch of assets yeah. for a big fight at the end. Absolutely not. Yeah, a bunch of... A bunch of... Uh, uh, different arms. Just different PNGs. <laughs> they rotated in different ways. Secret Invasion 1 with 65%, yeah. followed by The Mandalorian with 8%. Wow, that's a big... That won by a lot. Yeah, it sure did. Mandalorian was not great either. Mm. That last season, pretty, pretty yeah. dull. Fraser Reboot, haven't seen it, 6.2. Ahsoka, 5.5. And The yeah. Witcher, 4.9. Yeah, people really turned on The Ooh, Witcher. We're, we're, uh, we're approaching the pointy end, James. Worst movie ever. Oh, my God. Uh, these top contenders have been chosen by listeners from a longer list. Last year, James voted for Fantastic Beasts 3. Stand by Mace, that. Meso voted for Thor 4. Different. I definitely stand by that. Yep. And the listeners voted for Morbius. <laughs> yep. Uh, here we go. The sixty-five dinosaurs. Oh, update: movie. Aquaman two and Rebel Moon added just, just in, in case. case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sixty-five, the dinosaur movie with yeah. um, Adam Driver. I want to protect little girl from from dinosaurs. My son is dead. Ah, Blair. <laughs> no, we would Blair. Blair. Blair's bad. Blair's bad. Blair's bad or surprise. Okay. You know. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like he didn't emote enough. For me I'm to... on. I'm on uninhabited world. Oh, there's d- there dinosaurs. Blair. Blair. You see, he's I don't have universal health care. Blair. Blair. That's great. That's terrific. What movie is that from? This movie. He doesn't have you. Un- that's why he's doing space missions. All oh, right. Okay. Because he's from Planet No Universal okay. Health Care. He's probably in a movie where he does in, just set in America. Where he doesn't have universal. I mean, healthcare. yeah, just any movie set in America. I guess that's true. Ant Man and the Lost Quantum Mania. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. 
The Exorcist Believer didn't see it. Apparently that's bad. Fast X. Yeah. The Flash. Uh, I think the, it's elevated by Jason Momoa. Absolutely. To take it, it out of yeah. just a movie. Ghosted. Oh, God. The Meg 2. The, I didn't watch it. The Meg 2. The Trench. Yep. Rebel Moon Part 1. A Child of Fire. No, that's Fire. bad. Yeah. Shazam Fury of the Gods. The Super Mario Brothers movie. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Didn't love it. Didn't see it. I <laughs> there you go. Um, 65 Dinosaur movie. Yes. Was so... Mid? Well, yeah. You, and I, you're doing the hand emotion for mid and yeah, cringe. I thought it was... I didn't think it was cringe. Okay, yeah. I thought, like, Adam Driver, Dinosaur Planet. Something, yeah. Well, something's gonna... Comet's coming to Earth. I feel like it had a good tension throughout most of it. I, I liked that it made dinosaurs scary again. When they were in it. Yeah, when they were in it. But but that's the thing. That's that's the key to it. Whereas, you know, in a Jurassic world, they're just props now and they're not fun or yeah. interesting. Well, that um, weren't fun or interesting in this either. No, oh, wow. Uh, but Ghosted. No, Ghosted was bad. That was that on Apple Chris TV? Evans, Anna Diarmas, yeah, and she's okay. a spy. I didn't and see it. It's fucking terrible. Dyer, wow. Yeah, that's a, that's out of left field for you. Yeah, not worse weird. than the Flash. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. Worse than Rebel. It's Man. one of those movies that's like this isn't real. Yeah, like it, it felt fake. It felt like a fake movie. It felt like though it was going to cut to somebody watching it in a better movie. It's yeah, it, it it I didn't see it, but it based on the trailers, is it one of those? Is it one of those ones where you watch a scene of it and you expect like the studio bell to go ring and the director goes cut? And yeah, exactly. Back. Yeah, and it's Chris Evans the actor and Anna Diarmas the actor, and they're like, can't believe we have to do this one. With, uh, man, I got a lot of <laughs> oh, all my divorce papers have gone through, and now I got to pay, pay for this. I've got to pay for two houses or whatever. <laughs> exactly. And you're like, shut up, Anna Diarmas. Yeah, shut up. Why are you in so? Why are you have so many divorces? Yes. <laughs> Does she? I don't know. <laughs> um, but. But also, like, it went to streaming and who cares, right? Yeah. So, But uh, again, Rebel Moon Part 1 went to streaming and it is bad. Yeah. To me, that is that is up there. That is, that is in contention because, again, and we talked about it last week, yeah. the week before or whatever, recency bias, but this was supposed to be the one where we went, okay, this is Zack Snyder doing whatever he wants yeah. with all the money he wants. Nobody's telling him no. He can you can make it as long as whatever he wants. He can make a show, a series, yeah. whatever. And he and this is what we got. And it's just not interesting or good or yeah, in any I, in any way. I did really hate that. And you know, and and it, I and I think it was also like I was really rude. Like I like him as a person. Yeah, also, right. uh-huh. he seems fun and nice. And people yeah. who know him and work with him say he's great. And so I'm like, then cool. Like let's and like you said, it was it was just his opportunity to well, do. It, 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 I guess it's not even his opportunity, but. The the Snyder fandom, it's this was their chance to be to prove all the haters. To wrong. say like, see, yeah, see, this is what, and I and I was very willing to go, yeah, okay, yeah, I I I would love to have, you know, I've liked I like Watchmen and Three Hundred's pretty good and etc. But I wanted to be like, this is him in his prime. This is what he's been building to. I want it to be good. If yeah. it were good, it'd be great, and I'd be happy. And then I'd go, and I could be like. I could have a com- like I've never had a conversation with a Snyder fan in real life, honestly. Oh, no one's me. ever admitted to it. Yeah. But I would love if somebody's like, I love Zack Snyder. I'd be like, Re- how good was Rebel Moon? Yeah. What, a, what an he opener. Did it. He did it. There, I, you know, I had my doubts, but he proved me wrong and he didn't. It's just bad. But I also thought we're going to this, this was a, just a movie. So that's why I was talking about 65 Dinosaur movies so much. Yeah, right, right, it's right. not It's not that bad. It's not the mid movies, all. is it? God, Mason. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's the Flash. It's Ghosted. It's Rebel Moon for me. Mm-hmm. It's those three. Yep. Mm-hmm. But they they're different in they're bad in different ways. Yep. Like the Flash is like you love this, uh-huh. and it's like I fucking hate everything about right. this. Actually, yeah. You've put somehow through statistically, you've created like the worst thing I could experience yeah. in a cinema. I guess as well at the very least. Even though Rebel Moon is so derivative of previous, I'm not. I'm not changing my mind. But even <laughs> though Rebel Moon is so derivative of everything else, at least he went. I'm going to make this for the fa- like. This is what my fans like. Yeah, they like this grim, dark universe, and it's what he likes as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. And but but the Flash is just like stati- Like we've done. This is the these are the properties we have to use. Yeah, and this is like. Our our polling has said that this is what people want. I guess. Yeah. So let's. It's just such a churned out product. Yeah. Even more than Ghosted? Yeah, well, Ghosted also, it's like Chris Evans like, I don't know how to get a girlfriend. And it's like, you're fucking Chris Evans. Right. Like, obviously in this universe you're not, mm. but you look exactly like Chris That's Evans. That's true, yeah. I don't believe you. I'm unlucky in love. 
Why? Yeah. Why would that be the case? Does he have a repellent personality? Yes. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> but it's in a way that's like, it's, uh, yeah, look, here's the thing about Rebel Moon as well, and we yes. talked about this. We, we feel like there's not going to be the campaign to be like, continue Rebel Moon because people want, People only care about Zack Snyder in terms of like petitioning things when it's the DC characters. And he's the underdog in yeah, a way. He's, he's, the, the, he's the guy pushing back against the suits. Yeah, whereas if you look at like nobody's like, Bob zombie universe, Zack Snyder, yeah, you've, right. you've destroyed the zombie. No one cares. Yeah, right. They want to see his version mm. of Batman say fuck and then like yeah, have sex right. with Catwoman or whatever. Yeah. And, and then... But, James, I'm going to press you for a decision. It's The Flash. Okay, right. I was so mad, Mason. Yeah, I know you were, yeah. And it was a long time ago, but yeah. I still feel it. Yeah. Just, again, that's the arrogance of being like, you fucking love this. Yeah, Eat right. this shit. Like, <laughs> that's just... <laughs> okay, now, James, we got uh, we got uh, one more before the... For the right big... now, we're going to do the results oh, first. Yeah. Worst movie ever was The Flash, 14%. Yeah. Quantumania, 18%. Winnie the Blue, Blue, Blue Winnie the Blue, Blue, Blood and Honey, 9%. Ghosted, 5%. Fast X, 4%. Didn't even get a Guernsey. But, again, Rebel Moon was added late. That's true. So, yeah. Now, here's, also, yeah. people hate Rebel Moon. Look yeah. at any comments anywhere. They people should. do not like it. Just a movie, James. Yep. Not the best, not the worst. Some of these, there's some crossover here, of course. Yeah, of course. But there's some new stuff. So 65 Dinosaur Movie, I think maybe that's your, your lead contender is, yeah. at this point. Yep. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. That's also very it's bad. It's very just a movie. I think it's bad, though. It's probably bad. It's too bad to be just a movie. Yeah. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. That's just Blue a movie. Blue Beetle. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. What a God, what a brutal year for, <laughs> for movies that should have, could have been and should have been incredible, but it may be just a movie. John Wick Chapter 4. How, no, how no, dare absolutely you, not. Who, how dare you, Rob Collings or whoever <laughs> nominated that? How dare. Fast X. No, the, because of Jason Momoa. Yeah, the Marvels. Maybe Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning. No, that's a good one. Rebel Moon Part One. No, that's a Shazam bad. Fury, that's a bad movie. Shazam: Fury of the Gods, Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Well, those last two are just a movie. Transformers was very just a movie for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I said best movie ever, but that's the rule. We can't in oh, across the course of the year we can't say anything's just a movie. We have I, to- I the, okay, I'm not going to put Indiana Jones in just a movie because at the end he traveled through time and then had a mental breakdown. And I enjoyed that element of it. That's a swing, And I thought he it? really sold that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not a great movie. No. I, you, you, if you were like, defend your decision, I wouldn't even bother. Right. But, uh, but that elevates it slightly out yeah. of just a movie. I'm going to, ooh, Shazam, Fury of the Gods. I think that may be. Who knows? You know what? I'm going to give it to Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Because who knows? Because who knows? <laughs> like, Transformers Rise of the Beast, I'm like, oh, at least, like, the two human characters, they were... Pete like, Davidson was good. Yeah, Pete Davidson was good. And the two human characters, I'm like, oh, I like these Unless guys. Unless he's bad, in which case we, we we don't endorse anything. We never liked any of those people. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, you know, there was some... You know, the moment where, like... The the Pete Davidson's transforming is being destroyed, but then the, the him and the human guy team up and they I yeah think that's pretty, that's kind of affecting and interesting. In it, isn't there? But I don't think Shazam Fury of the Gods. Optimus Prime anything. is depressed. That's true. Yeah, uh, Bumblebee comes back to life. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. You, you and don't call it a comeback either. I won't do that. Yeah, no, I won't do that. For me, it's sixty five dinosaur movie. Okay, so for me, Shazam Fury of the Gods, just nothing happened in it. Yeah. Well, anyway, Dial of Destiny won at 21%, oh, followed wow. by 65 Dinosaur Movie, 14%, Quantumania, 13%, The Marvels, 12%, Blue Beetles, 11%. Do you think 65 Dinosaur Movie would have been elevated if people didn't know it was just yes. like, and it's the past? And they tell you before, 65 uh, million years ago, there were dinosaurs and this guy came to Dinosaur World. I mean, probably not, because if you saw a trailer for it and it's him and the little girl and he's protecting the little girl and you're like, what's happening? Mm. You'd be like, well, it's probably aliens, right? Yeah. So the idea that it's dinosaurs, that would shock you for a minute. Yeah. But then it doesn't really change that much. It's still like kind of. Do you think they originally caught in calling it 65? They were like, we're going to hide what this is. Yeah. Like, because we, okay, we did a commentary for Planet of the Apes 1968, which is going to come out on Mm bigsandwich.co. Like, they hide what's going on in that movie the entire yeah. time. Do you think Except that for the was... Planet of the Apes part. Yeah, and the bit... But they oh, call but the big it... reveal, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I've just remembered, uh, sometimes I do an award called the Find and Replace Award. Oh, yeah. Which is where they've clearly gotten, like, an old script of something and they've just branded it. Yeah, okay. And uh, this year I'm going to go with Expendables 4. <laughs> Expend 4 Walls. I didn't say it. Yeah, um, but it was probably Expendables but I think, 2. I think they probably got the script for Expendables 3 and they went, okay, Find and Replace, like, secret military base with... Prison. Prison or ship or something. And they, they were like, find and replace Jet Li and put Megan Fox in there or something. <laughs> Who cares? If Jet Li wasn't the third Big one. Big time winner. Big time winner. They've done it. Also, 
we haven't got comics in here. Oh yeah. God, I'd have to look at my comics. Maybe list. maybe look at um maybe look at the Big Sandwich Com- Comic Book Club. Oh yeah, but they're not just the comics no, that came yeah. out this year. Yeah. Let me have a quick look at my library. Okay, look. It's at all that. on a stupid Kindle app look now. Look at your library. <laughs> Uh, what have I got here? Oh, I'm liking Void Rivals. That's good, yeah. I enjoyed That's Void a, Rivals. That's a new Robert Kirkman. I'm enjoying Predator Wolverine. A okay. big game is happening. Mm-hmm. Minor Threats, we read that this year. That was That's good. That's true, yeah. I read the Cowboy Crooked Man this okay. year. That was fun. Yep. Black Set I haven't read yet. Uh, what else have I got here? Blah, 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 blah. Every now and then I buy an Aliens comic expecting I'm going to pick it up forever. And then, oh, yeah. oh, Maniac of New York was out this year. It was a new That's series right, like that. Yeah. Eight Billion Genies. That's good. That I haven't. Good have I finished that? I don't know. Uh, what do you think, Mason, in terms of comics? Uh, I don't remember anything that I read. Oh, A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance was good. Oh, yeah, that's the one that's got um, Benedict Wong in it. Yeah, I don't know if that came out this year, but I'm going to say that. I okay, really great. liked it. Yeah. Uh, you could say eight, 8 Billion Genies. I kind of like Big Game. I know it's like... No, I like Big Game. It's kind of the, the tying together of all the Mark Miller, Miller World yeah. stuff, you know. No, I, I I'm agree. excited to see where it goes, I guess. I like no, I agree. I like big game also. Mm. Uh, there's Batman versus a robot that was pretty fun as well. Oh yeah, yep, yeah. Do you, do you read Bloodstained Teeth? Did you tell me about that? No, I don't know what that is. Yeah, cool. I got a few here that I'm like, oh shit, I haven't even read that yet. <laughs> yep, little monster. I mean, isn't that like isn't that isn't that all content these days? Oh my god, Morbius. I've got Morbius in here. Yeah, because I read some Morbius at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, let's move it on, Mason. It's the best movie. The That's top right. ten nominated by listeners. Yeah. Uh, the top contenders have been chosen by listeners from a long list. Last year, James voted for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Mason voted for the movie Ghosted. No, I and didn't. The, <laughs> I voted for Glass Onion. And the listeners chose How dare you. The Batman starring Robat Bat and Bat. Okay, here's the nominees. Top ten. Barbie. Yep. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Good movie. Godzilla Minus One. Mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yep. John Wick Chapter 4. Yep. Killers of the Flower Moon. Oppenheimer. The Marvels. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, or other. God. For me, Godzilla minus one. Yeah, probably. Because surprised me. Yeah. To- I, I'd heard it's good, but I'm yeah. like, it's Godzilla, whatever. Well, exactly. I'm not, you know, and we've talked about this before, but I, you know, I'm like, well, the Godzilla, like the American Monsterverse movies, they're pretty good. And we, were, pretty- we were in the midst of watching those. Yeah. And I'm like, these are yeah. Pretty fun. Yeah, I like Pretty them. fun, you know, and I'm like, and again, I said. Before, and we're on the back end of them, the less yeah, good ones when I right. saw it. And I remember saying to you beforehand this, I'm like, oh, this will probably be okay. Yeah. I hope I hope it's hope it's fun, but I don't know. It might be a bit not. Yeah. But like just the, again, you need the balance between Godzilla showing up and he's destroying stuff or he's saving everybody. Yeah. But you need the balance between that and the human drama. And I think they absolutely crushed this. What a great, great cast of memorable people. Like the, the 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 male lead and the female lead yep. were so good just working together, yep. and the, the 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 team of like ra- the ragtag the coming team of, together, the, yeah, the, the coming together, the ragtag team of 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 oddballs who have to work together to stop Godzilla. Yeah, just Godzilla is just a a, a mean maniac, mm-hmm. just just all and the 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 level of destruction and it's so good. And if people haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to get the Blu-ray or whatever. Just want to say special shout out to Dungeons and Dragons because it was good and fun. It was good and fun. And I yeah. like that. I mean, but everything on here is like everything here was good. Barbie was good. Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, uh, you know, what? I wouldn't put Marvel the Marvels in the top ten. Oh right, yeah, good point. Yeah, it's yeah. But John Wick Chapter Four reinvigorated yep, the franchise really for that. me. So that, this is this is a tough call. For I wouldn't me. put Killers in there either. Interesting. Oh, would I? Why not? No idea. I think I'm putting them and Nap- that and Napoleon together. Two streaming yeah, movies. Yeah, no, you're seen right. Us. But I, I did. I did really enjoy Killers. Yeah, Killers just great. And again, odd faces. Odd faces. <laughs> the the everybody everybody putting in their best work. And no, everybody. Even though it's like Leonardo DiCaprio and De Niro, such a good ensemble. Yeah. Just everybody's putting in their A game, and everybody gets a chance to just. And the same with Oppenheimer. Yeah. Just every like people people who. Like Alden Ehrenreich, who you like, this guy's never got a fair shot, I think. This yeah. guy's great and and he's And he big. had and he had to be Han Solo. Yeah, once. right. He had to be Han. He got he got he, he got jury duty and he had to be Han Solo. <laughs> and but just all the you just every, and he's got a chance to be in a billion dollar movie, so everybody has seen so many great people. Didn't make just, a billion, but yeah, go on. Didn't it? No, Eight hundred and fifty million it, it or something. Got close. It got well, close. that's fine, I guess. <laughs> uh but yeah, just uh, what a what a what a good lineup. But yeah. I am gonna go with Godzilla minus Me one. Too. 
Uh, Spider-Verse 26, 1, 26%. Oh, yeah, right. Oppenheimer got 20%. Barbie, 12%. Guardians, 11%. Godzilla, minus 1, 8%. Thank God. Well, I mean, that had a smaller uh, that had a smaller release. That's and right. also, people didn't like it as much as the other ones. That's right. Yeah. And what do, you, what do you think about that? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> favorite moment from the – there's a last thing here. It's an optional thing, which I guess you could still submit, which is favorite moment from the podcast this year. Uh, an optional thing with the best of the year clip show coming soon in January. Thanks for voting. So if you wanted to put something in from yeah, the show yeah. that you liked, maybe this entire segment you want to put in. Maybe. Slot that folks, in. Folks, maybe. And I, I, I can only speak for myself, but maybe it's Ferrari Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't think it's a character that you've fully fleshed out. That's the thing. The possibilities are endless. No, but I think it's in a, a bad way. Oh. It's like you've shown a G.I. Joe card. <laughs> no, I think it's – I think it's – just boundless. It's got franchise oh, it's potential. it's got legs. Oh, the world of, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Can you see this being purchased by a major studio? I'm saying Adam Driver's probably at the door right now. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. I think he's I think he's gone to the studio and he's like, can we pull regular Ferrari out of cinemas? <laughs> because Ferrari Dracula is, I think, is going to overshadow it. Yeah. I'm going to be embarrassed by my previous work as regular Ferrari, <laughs> Mr. Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari. <laughs> And I'm gonna. I'm, I'd rather be Ferrari Dracula. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, look. Let's see what people think. Okay. Yeah. I would say almost certainly not. Wow. And if it does, it's Collings doing you a favor. That's right. He's placating you, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. All right. Thank you to everybody who voted. But That's it's not right. the end of the show, is it, Mason? Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. No. Really. Really appreciate people taking the time to go through yeah. this. Um, yeah. That's super awesome. And again, thank you so much to Collings for putting this together. My God. So much work. Yeah. All right. What's up next, Mason? It's what we're reading. Yep. What we're going to read. Yep. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> Woo! Last Woo! what we're reading for the year, but That's also right. the first one for the new year. Oh, my goodness. Mason, I watched the Christmas special of Doctor Who. Me too. That's what I want to talk about. Uh, with the new, the, the new guy, the new yeah. Doctor Who. The new guy, new gal, all That's the new right. folks. I thought it was pretty fun. I thought it was super fun. Yeah. So we got Shooty Gart was the new Doctor and Millie Gibson, I think, is the, yep. the new companion. Will I come back? I don't know. When I is it know. back? Let's, let's, but let's, uh, it's enough for me to go, yeah, I'll check in on this. Exactly right. Like the, the new Doctor, it, it, was, it reminded me of like – First couple of episodes of Tenant, I yeah, feel okay, like. Yeah. Like there's a lot of energy to it. Yeah. Um, it's got some zip and some zap. It's got some zip and some zap, and it's it's like the the ten that original Tenant Doctor has a real mean edge to him. Yeah. And I think that that was that was absent in a good way. Like his this is this is again like when we talk about the previous Doctor Who specials. He, he literally shed that part of himself. He <laughs> shed the sad bit. The sad bit has a little cottage in London or yeah. something now. Mm. Um, but I thought it was a good fun. Um, it's it's a. Uh, Ruby Sunday is a is a is is an orphan and yep. where did she come from and but but and she's trying to find her mm. and she she lives with a, like a her original foster yep. parents and I think it got a rather. little vague in terms of like some time travel stuff that yeah happened. I didn't, I didn't they know. went oh something happened and that someone rode through time and well I'm I mean like, the main part it? the main part is is, is uh, Ruby has to look after a, a foster baby and then it gets stolen by goblins yes which is the who, who live in the sky in a, in a flying yeah what what have you and then they that's a fun adventure yeah uh, there's, there's a song there is a, there's a musical bit and what I liked about I th- I'm sure there are some people who are down on this some people are like this is a, uh, Doctor Who's actually serious stuff so whatever but I I, I, I don't I, think you've ever seen Doctor I don't Who if you think that. Doctor Who. I really liked it. And I you know what I liked about it? Because the the goblins sing a song about how they're gonna feed this baby yeah. to the goblin king. And then the doctor's like, no, no, keep going. The song ends, and he's like, No, I'm gonna sing also yeah. now. And I like that Ru- everybody gets involved. Yeah. Which I like I think that spoke to the character of like, well, Ruby's gonna be a character who just rolls with it kind yeah. of thing. You know, you ever in a situation where you gotta sing all of no, a sudden? I never. I would oh, never, and I right. can't. Okay. Have you? Yeah. Great. It's good. So yeah, I, I I don't know when is it back sometime in mid year. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I don't who know. Who cares? Who important. cares, man? But yeah, it's good to see uh, Doctor Who is a, is a thing that I might start watching again at some yeah, point. Yeah, hell yeah. I also have been watching um, the What If season two, which oh, are yes. doing all episodes leading up to New Year's. Oh yes, I think it's much better than season. Uh, one. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if everybody thinks that. I haven't read anything about it, but it's not just like, what if this person did what that person did? Right. Uh-huh. It's, um, there's a 1602 episode. Yeah, great. Uh, there's a Nebula is a detective. She becomes a member of the Nova Corps Ooh. and does like a little detective episode, and that's really fun. I love that. Happy Hogan Saved Christmas. He does a Die Hard. There's that episode. So they're all out now? Uh, they would be all out, yeah, but yeah, I haven't right. seen the last couple. Um, and just, just as an aside, 
It's because there's some characters that don't appear, like as in, sorry, there's some actors who don't reprise their roles as like various ones, but the voices for Tony Stark and Captain America, incredible. Like that's not, if I didn't know, I'd be like, yeah, probably. Is it the same ones from last I season? I believe it is, yeah. Oh, okay, but just right. really nailing the cadences of those two, right. those two characters. And there are some returning episodes and characters like Captain Carter is back and it's the same Captain Carter. Uh-huh. Um, Nebula is back who was on the, Guardians of the Multiverse, she's back. Doc, that dork, dork, dark, Doctor Strange is back. <laughs> Doctor Strange. Yeah. So I was kind of like, oh, I guess I'll watch this. And then I'm like, huh, no, these are pretty good, actually. I like these a lot. Love There's that. a Peter Quill come back to, comes back to Earth as a little kid and he starts trying to kill everybody. Oh, yeah. It's that. It's just, it's good, man. All right, I'm going to check it out. Quite I've got a little it. bit of downtime, so I'll do that. You should, nerd. Now it's time for letters. Whoa. Give this a go. Give it a go. Tell your mates. The classic one was the letters, oh, letters. Too soft. Perfect. Well, 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 if well. it isn't the letter segment of the show. That's right. And let me tell you the truth. Go on. Uh, people write in. Mm-hmm. They might send a Gmail to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. That's right. Or if they're still using Twitter, they'll hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter. Do you have any letters? I have so many letters, James. You don't Here's need to read from, them all. I'll read Two or three. Okay. Here's one from Daniel. Daniel. Hey, boys, I've been listening to the pod for years now and subscribed to Big Sandwich. Thank you. Randy and love the Comic Book Club. Thank you. Just wondering if with the Umbrella Academy show coming to an end this year, I wondered if you would cover the comic on the show. That's a great idea. We should do that. that I love yep. I. I, I'm not sure if I've read all of it, but I've everything I've, I've read, read a bunch I've, of it. Thought it was delightful. It's really great and it's a lot different from the show. That is true. And that's what I love about the show yeah. is that they were like, let's take the framework mm. and make some changes But it's there. the same creator as well, isn't it? It is, it's your right way, yeah. So, that's, so they're not just like, let's just ruin this guy's it's thing. It's the same thing with uh, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Where the creator's still involved and went, I would I would personally like to do a fresh thing. I don't yeah. want to spin my wheels again and do the same thing, but animated. Yeah. I would like to do it. And that's the same with this. It's clearly like, we should update this for a more modern yeah. concept, you know? Mm. Uh, have a great new year and happy Hogmanay from Scotland. What's Hogmanay? Don't know. Cool. Probably Scottish. New Year. Scottish New Year. Yeah. Oh, hang on. My phone's ringing again. I better not be a mum. Is it my mum? Oh, my God. Oh, it's Claire. Oh, better not be inviting you to coffee. Hang on. Hello. Hello. I'm just doing a podcast with my good friend Nick Mason. He admitted it. And this is something you want me to tell everybody on the show, just to clarify. All right, I'll put you on speaker. Uh, So everybody, Claire wants me to tell everybody that she drove a road and she nearly got the car bogged, but she didn't. Love that. Yeah. There you go, Claire. Yeah, you're on the show. Congratulations. <laughs> this is what you wanted. No, you should tell them. I mean, it's such a good story. You should tell them. <laughs> no, you can't. There's no time. We're, we're, we're wrapping it up for the year, Claire. You're not on speakerphone anymore, just so you know. You're just talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to go. I got a podcast. Claire, I'm at work. Imagine if I was a professor. Right, I was a professor, and I was and I was doing surgery. Doing surgery. Imagine and if he was a professor in. of surgery. Yeah, and you came in, and this was the situation. People would be like, "This is not appropriate." Mm. You know, I had. To, she said, I, "I didn't have to answer the phone." No, I have to because what if somebody died? We had this conversation earlier. Mm. That, that's, you didn't. To me, she did nearly die, but you didn't. That's true. No, you're probably right. You're an absolute superstar. Congratulations. Good work on not dying or killing the kids. Well, let's give her an award. Yeah. We've still got time to give her an award. Okay, what's the award? Don't, the don't get bogged award. There, you got the don't get bogged now award. Now we have to do that every year. <laughs> okay, b- bye. <laughs> that was Claire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the avoided the bog award. <laughs> so we have to give it every year. <laughs> okay, fair now enough. we have to think of an idea yeah. for every year. Does it have to be someone literally avoiding a bog? No, it can be a metaphor. Great, cool. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad. Another classic award. I'm glad she didn't die. On Me that too. road, on In that a treacherous bog. road. In a bog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. That's Thank right. you to Claire also for this year. My goodness. A lot of things that are happening that people. Yeah, all right, even let's know. wrap it up. Nah, Mason. You don't like kudos? No, you I don't like, like kudos. it. Okay, what's next? Uh, I got a tweet here from Redline Flames who says, I watched the movie Click again. It would be a good Caravan of Garbage series with Adam Sandler film. Some uh, some of Click is set in 2023. Cal Kestis is in it. Whoa. And Terry Crews is in it. Whoa. Yeah, I'll, I'll do some Adam Sandler stuff. Sure, definitely. I guess. Yeah. He's got some stuff coming up soon. Probably. We'll do sad stuff. Yeah, do this with Punch Drunk Love. Yeah. Uncut Gems. Just the sad stuff. And Click. Click. The, the, three, the, the, sad, the sad trilogy. The Adam Sandler trilogy. Oh, I love that. 
What else, Mason? Here's an email from Nick. Yep. He says, hello, boys. My girlfriend is the daughter of two Australian immigrants in the US. They moved here to Alabama in the 80s. What? Can you give me some 1980s Australian slang and references I can use to impress them? Jeez. 1980s. Crocodile Dundee, obviously. Yeah, that's but a big Paul one. Paul Hogan. Just Paul say Hogan. Paul Hogan. Say hey, hey, it's Saturday. Say that, obviously. Just say hey, hey, it's Saturday. Say how about that Bob Hawke. Yeah. <laughs> Prime Minister of Australia. Say America's Cup, 1983. America's Cup. That's right. Yeah. I bet you're conflicted about that, you could say. Yeah. Because you live in America. What else could you say? Dame Edna. So you could say Dame Edna. You don't have to say Dame Edna sucks, because in the 80s probably didn't suck as much. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Paul Keating. Paul Keating, classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Treasurer yeah. or whatever he was. That's right. Uh, the Ford Falcon. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Slamming, like, slamming down a can of Solo. The Holden Kingswood. Oh, that's good. That is good. Yeah, slam the Solo Man. Yeah, exactly. Say, say the Solo Man says hi. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, say Albie Mangles. Say Albie <laughs> Mangles. Yes. <laughs> Famous beach bum adventurer Albie Mangles. Say... Um, just the comedy company? Say the comedy company. Might be com- a bit late. Depends when they move. Yeah, so maybe say, do you remember the comedy company? Yep. Uh, say Kylie Minogue. Say Alvin Purple. Yep. Say, um, <laughs> uh, what came before the comedy company? Probably something bad. Something bad. Something awful. Something even worse than the comedy company. Yeah. Say some mother's, no, what was the Australian version of that? I don't know. The sad guy who lived with his mother. Mm. With Ruth, oh, Ruth Cracknell. Um, there's a remake of that now. Is there, oh, yeah, there is too. Um, it's called Mother and Son. But he did one before that, didn't he? Say Norman Gunston. Norman Gunston. <laughs> say say Peter Russell Clark. Say getting a big M <laughs> at the, at the what do you call them? The, what do we call The whatever. No, what do you call a, like a, like a, a, cor- a milk bar. The milk bar. Say getting a big M at the milk bar and yep. also getting a um, uh, one of those awful meat stick things. Yep. What are they called? A bloody... Kebab? No, a... Um, Ch- uh, Chico Roll. Say, oh, okay. say, here's how you open if you want to impress him. This is it. And this is the final thing. Say, hey, I bet you remember going down to the milk bar for a big M and a Chico Roll <laughs> and then watching Norman Gunston on the telly. Perfect. Yeah. And they'll say, you marry this girl, <laughs> whatever the thing, you, you better marry her. You know? Say the first singer of ACDC who yeah, died. Bon Scott yeah. probably. All right, last one, John mate. Farnham. John Farnham. Yeah. You're the voice. You're the voice, say et that. Mm. Um, Lightning Jack, whatever. Was he Lightning Jack? He was Lightning Jack. Ca- yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, Ethan uh, Manley says, hashtag Week the Planet Pod, listening to Godzilla minus one app, and I think it'd be a good caravan of garbage to hear your thoughts on some of the original Godzilla movies in the lead up to Godzilla X Kong. We'd love to do that. I was thinking at least we do the first Godzilla and the very, very, very first King Kong. Yeah. Two black and white yeah, yeah, yeah. movies. Uh, and he's one more And watch them get no views. That's right. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe post. No, I, don't I know. doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, here's a one more email from Gregorio. Gregorio! Subject line Lost Viking Heads. Yep. Lost Vikings was a great puzzle game from Blizzard with three characters each having a unique ability. Hey, what it was the interesting fuck? to solve each puzzle. A great, uh, greatly underrated game. Grats to Meso for calling it out to it. Knew he had great taste in games. What other old school games do you feel are not fully appreciated? Well, Viking Child, obviously. I'll cover this for you, James. Albie Mangles, the game. <laughs> Norman Gunston, the game. Lightning Jack, the game. Red Faces, the special ga- clip show, the, the game. The game. Yeah. Going down to the milk bar for a big M and a Chico Roll, the game. <laughs> the point and click adventure game. Yes. All of those are great, I think. <laughs> Plus other games. I would love it just to go up and just, just list some things off his phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Albie Mangles, Dickie Knee, <laughs> uh, America's Cub. Yeah, that's right. Uh... <laughs> Is that enough? Have I impressed you yet? Is that? Uh, but to answer your question. I like we, to think uh, their references haven't gone beyond that. Yeah. So you couldn't go into Before the we go, and this is a plug, but I've just remembered it, but so it's also it's also relevant. We're going on break, obviously, but the yep. Big Sandwich is still going. So you go to bigsandwich.co, you sign up. We're doing, we've recorded a bunch of stuff in advance, but yes. one of it is a, is a little old school game that people might recognize, a little Let's Play called Doom. Yeah, Doom, man, for the 30th Doom. anniversary. That's right, yeah. It's an exciting one. Yeah. Uh, look, and to answer your question, I love a point and clicker. I oh, my a, God. I love a I Monkey know that. Island. I love a... Other ones, Broken Sword. Yep. Remember Broken Sword? No, which That's one's that? You Let don't me have check. to. Uh, and others, you know? Let me check. Broken Sword game. I don't know what this is. No. 1996? Yeah. I don't know. I love the game Mean Streets, Ooh. which is not based on the Martin Scorsese movie. It's a different thing. 
Oh. And the sequel, Martian Memorandum, and some other ones. Are they all set in space? No, they're set on Earth mostly. Why is it called Martian Memorandum? There's a little bit on Mars. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's like Total Recall. Mean, mean Streets is a very Blade Runner. It's a big-time Blade Runner rip-off situation, but it's... it's I still. love the movie Blade Runner 2049. Mm. Yeah, yep, that's the one. Yeah. Well, Mason, yes. it's that time of year again. The start of the, the year. The end of the show. And yeah, the start, the start of the year. year. Also, I'm changing the theme song for real. Okay, great, good. It's going to be all instrumental. I love that. Good. I don't want to hear about it. If you, if I hear about it, I'm going to change it to something even worse. <laughs> so this is bad. You change it to a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Great. I Wait, love is that, that what people want though? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Figure out what they want the most and then do the opposite. That's what I'm spine. trying to do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Anyways, what do we got here? Folks, that's the it's the final it's the first episode of the year, but it's also the final episode in this season of the Weekly Planet. Oh my god. We're doing seasons now. That's We're right. Not. Uh, folks, thank you so much for listening. We absolutely appreciate it. We hope, season. we hope you come back in a few weeks. Oh, yeah. We very much appreciate that. Uh, we th- uh, thank you for telling your friends about it. Uh, but don't tell them in the next three weeks because they'll w- listen to one episode and they'll go, I'll love, I'd love more episodes and there won't be anything. Or they'll listen off. to the clip show and they'll be like, I don't get this. Yeah, I don't understand any of yeah. these deep, deep, irrelevant cuts. <laughs> Especially the part where they just started screaming about Albie Mangles, <laughs> which is going in the best of. Yeah. Um, uh, but but uh, tell your friends about it in a few weeks. Yep. Uh, and also maybe uh, send them caravan of garbage way. And yeah, absolutely. Send yeah. them to the send them to the YouTube's. Yeah. Maybe some of the best solves. Uh, but also uh, thank you for leaving a five star review on your podcast catcher of choice. And if you do leave I'll five stars, out. James will read it out for you. This is from Rico Tolls who says, ha, five stars. This show is a podcast be- best consumed when you're on your fifth hour of a road trip because they are just as deliriously tired as you. That's true. That's You'll true. have to fight the giggles to avoid drifting across three lanes of traffic. Thank you so much. And this one is from. Chaotic Fish with a K who says, you know that movie podcast you've been looking for? Yeah. Well, listen to this. Oh, it's me already. Uh, great host and with great chemistry, funny and a good way to kill time while waiting for a bus. Give it a whirl, mate. You won't be disappointed. Oh, my Love goodness. That. Thank you so much. Uh, folks, if you want to get in contact with us, you can go to, go to uh, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Yep. You can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group, Woo. the Weekly Planet Podcast subreddit and Discord for fun at civil chats about podcasts and pop culture. Get in there and have a chat about, about podcasts and all the stuff you've been watching and, and tell us. Tell tell us tell everybody how wrong we were about the awards. We'd love to hear about. We'd it. love to hear about that. But get in there and you can if if you like. Well, oh, talk to other <laughs> listeners of the show and well, while we're away. Uh, if you want to um, uh, follow some people on the socials, first follow Rob Collins, who does all the work behind the scenes. Oh my god! At the Weekly Planet, uh, you follow him at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. Follow him at. Raw Collins on Twitter. You also, thank it. you for, to Fidel and Maisie and Sarabi for oh moderating all those forums and doing all sorts of stuff, clips, channels, Incredible and Incredible work all year. Video editing, all sorts, all sorts of stuff. Ben and Lawrence and Matt also Keeping working on the, on the Keeping YouTube. I mean, they get enough kudos on the channel. Do we need to bring them into this? No. I don't think so. No, that's yeah. right. <laughs> we should. No, it's good. No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, but follow me on Twitter at uh, Wikipedia Brown and on Instagram. I'm Nick Maso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Woo. You want to support the show, chuck in a buck over at patreon.com. We don't you would not miss. We'll take it. Or bigsandwich.co. Sign up for nine US dollars per month. Bonus podcast, movie, commentaries, early videos, video game, let's plays. Again, it'll keep going uh, while we're on break. So if you, want, right. if, you, if, you, if you like, I like these guys for some reason. And I want more of that stuff. We do we do stuff that's a little different from the regular podcast. That's right, but yeah. It's all fun, I think. We have a good fun time. I think it definitely is. In fact, I don't think I know. I'm confident. I'm pretty confident. Next week, nothing. We're on break. Yeah. Week Shut after up. that, nothing also. No, maybe the clip show at oh, some yeah. point. It'll happen at some point in January. Um, Collings puts a lot of effort into it. Leave him alone. He'll get he'll get to it. <laughs> get to Give it. Give him a minute. Give him a minute to have a little break. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, we'll be back with our best of the or most anticipated of the year. That'll be the first That's episode. Right. So yeah, again, thank you so much to everybody who listens and supports. Mason does have to go to work, so I can't. I'm kind of speeding through this, but I cannot stress <laughs> enough how much I love doing this. I got a this. little bit of time. I know, but I really appreciate. Oh, slow down. No, man. that's, that's too, too slow. slow. That's too slow. But oh my god, I know we're mean and rude, and we're sorry. All right, but <laughs> I just I have trouble expressing emotions. Okay, all right. That's your fault. I know. <laughs> no, the listeners. Oh. <laughs> but um Okay. I just I what I again I say this all the time and I'm sorry, but like just the idea that I can that I can do this from home and I can support and be with my family and just the free time that it that offers me in like in my life is just I, yeah. it's, I You can head to the beach and get bogged sometimes. Yeah, who knew? You know? You know? I'm a moron. And if you're thinking of starting a thing, you should just do it because then I think so it too. might work. I agree. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Because I'm a you, moron. And you don't know what the idea is also. No, I don't know. Yeah. That's for you to decide. Yeah, make it a good one though. Yeah, you better. Right. Yeah, don't fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you real soon. Goodbye.